in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of the Top 10 Show. I'm just going to go ahead and start us off with the thing we forget most often. My name is Matt Nost. Hi, I'm John Roca. John, John was having trouble with the intro for the first time ever. <laughs> Two takes, couldn't do it, and it didn't look yeah. like it was going to happen. So, <laughs> No, at some point, you just got to accept you can't do it that day. That's fine. And today's what day. <laughs> we'll, we'll ease into the conversation. It'll yeah, be, man. It'll be done. It's over. Yeah. Uh, you know, it felt good. I'll tell you that much. I was out on a rope, you know, out on a ledge I've never been on before. <laughs> It's fine. The you view is great. gorgeous. Yeah, you did great. The view is gorgeous. <laughs> How are you, man? I'm good, man. Yeah. What about yourself? Uh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm busy. I feel heavy as fuck because I haven't been able to work out as much, and I'm my pl- my clothes are getting tighter, which is really stressing me out. So I've started spinning uh, using the spin bike in the mornings. That I bought a spin bike over Thanksgiving. Okay. Would you get a Craigslist? Fo- uh, no, no. It was on. It was at Fry's of all places. For how much? It was originally a seven hundred, eight hundred dollar bike. Was it next to the Jeep? Which no, Fry's did you go to? Which... Like the one right here in Burbank. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was by the it was by the Jeep that's been cut open by the aliens. Uh-huh. No, but they had... people that don't live here. So yeah, Fry's yeah, yeah. is an electronics company, and in Southern California, each one has its own distinct theme. So yeah. this one up here is. Literally, a old looks like a '50s spaceship prop has been cut in half and put on the side of the fucking building. Yep. It's huge, and you walk in, and there's an old army jeep yeah. that has been cut in half. And like, I love the effect; it looks so cheesy. <laughs> it does. It does. But throughout the place, there's all these little sci-fi props. What they all have it. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It's the easiest way to tell which one were you at. Boom. <laughs> okay, I've been to that. One. Yeah, I've been because the, the Manhattan Beach one is chill. Like as you walk, there's no like yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's like a tiki place. They set up like a tiki vibe to it. You know, as they set up more of them, they have less. They used to be like their hook. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the thing. 50s yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, over Thanksgiving, they had it for eight. It was an eight hundred dollar bike. They had dropped down to three hundred, and it was new, like a new model. And they always tell you not to try out a new model, but I was like, "Look, three hundred. And so it's. I've been kind of walking by it every day, like being like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it." And then I finally started doing it this week. It's a killer, man, because I am fucking shit ton out of shape, Matt. Like twenty, twenty five minutes, I am heavy breathing, done. Got to lay on the ground, type shit. Well, okay, it that's sucks. not good. But if you can make it twenty, twenty five minutes, yeah, then you're. Not far from being able to do as much as you want to for as long as you want. Yeah, and I used to be able to work out. I could do. I could stop working out for like three or four months, and I could do 45, 5, 50 minutes of cardio, go right into an hour of weights, no problem. Yeah. But now, it's like I got to ramp myself up. So, and also the schedule, the new schedule with the job and everything. It's like it's, it's really tough. You have to make an, more of an effort to find time for it. Whereas working at Universal and then working freelance, I was able to kind of make yeah, my you own can schedule and stuff. Your day better. Exactly. So, yeah. I've just got to be a, a harder ass on myself about it because i don't like i'm 47 you know i'm getting older so it's like i can't knock it off like i used to so no you gotta you gotta work out to work out but yeah at this point just because yeah. your muscles need i gotta start doing it for basketball because i've been playing too long on saturdays right where it's killing me like the next day i'm feeling it in my legs yeah it usually only happened once in a blue moon right and now it's like every other week <laughs> oh, where i just wake up and my legs are just tired because i played three hours yeah three and a half hours like yeah. of literally running as much as we possibly can because games don't stop right of the system we have, it is rare if you're ever waiting and just boom, just games all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> it's not lasting. No, we're, we're going to find out eventually, like in a couple of weeks. That's part of why I got on the bike was to get my endurance back up so I could go play again. So, I mean, like that's the process going towards it. Oh, so. yeah. Snyder showed up for the first time. Oh, did he really? Last Saturday. How was that? Uh, listen. Can he play at all? I only played against him one one game. Okay. I was playing other people the entire rest of the day. Okay. Uh, although my team just ended up being a well balanced one, so we were pretty good all day. Oh, nice! Yeah, that's we always had good. A big guy that could do this. We have a point guard that could do this. We, I mean, it was just like a nice. Everybody knows their role. Yeah, and we played together enough to where we know where the other likes it and kind of stuff, and just right. kind of ran. But it was a good day. Yeah, it was a good day. How, how did he play? Can he play? Can he shoot? Uh, Is he quick at all? Like, what does he for do? For not having played in two years, he's not as awful. 
Because I've okay. seen a lot of people do that where they just haven't played in a while and you're like, yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, his endurance and stamina and everything else was yep. shot. <laughs> he literally had to walk off a game. It's just like, I'm, I'm sitting one out. Fellas. Did he really? Yeah. That son of a bitch. It was after, I think, his second game. Oh, okay. But, like, I'm just getting warmed up. That's like 12 yeah. or 5. We got two games in this. Let's go. <laughs> just I try and play out. like seven or eight if I can. Yeah, because he was talking all the shit in the office uh, when Perry and I were doing our th- our challenge. He was like, why don't you call me up? I, I can play. I want to play. And I'm like, I'm looking at him going, can you, though? Can you really, though? I, I don't. I, I didn't play against them. I don't Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. We you played, played with JT? the first game of the day. Did you play JT? Yeah, I played, I've played on JT's team like five times, six times. Right, right. And he's a he's a gunner. That's what you tell me. He's a shooter. Well, no, no, no. He made a transformation. He's a shooter. He made oh, yeah. a transformation because he. I used to call him Captain Shoots a lot <laughs> because the first three times he came out, man, he was Kobe. I'm yeah. touching. I'm shooting. I'm touching. Just like nobody oh. likes playing with that guy, even if they're making. Right. It's not fun. Right. But one day he was hot, and the other two days he was cold as shit. <sighs> and you're like, dude, you're a nice guy. So yeah. But I didn't say anything. The next time he came out was like months and months later, and he right. was just back to playing. And what he said was <laughs> when he was down, and I believe it was Ecuador. Uh, he was one of the tallest people. So he's just running rough shot on right. all these tiny Ecuadorian people. And he came back here thinking that he's, he's going to house and be like, dude, you're tiny on the court. I'm small on the court. Yeah. Well, the average height is probably like 6'2". Yeah. And just like, I'm 5'10". Like, yeah, I'm playing at a disadvantage. You, right. you know, you lose an extra three, four inches, whatever he is, that doesn't help. <laughs> but now, like, he likes to drive to his left. He does a fader from the baseline. Okay. That you just like, that's one of his shots. Yeah. And he's in rhythm in that shot, so I like it when he shoots it, even if he's covered, because that's a rhythm shot for him, right. no matter how awkward it looks. Just like, that's what he does. Fine. Mm-hmm. Shoot it all day long. Uh, he knows what he does now. Okay. And he's gotten his endurance up, so he can play for oh, a good shit. couple hours. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get out there. That's all you got to do. I swear to God, I'm going to get out there. Uh, but you've got to work out to work out, my uh, friend. It's, it's true. I'm discovering that very, very powerfully. What else is going on in the world? What, uh, what's uh, Any updates? Uh, I mean... No, no, <laughs> no. Not that I tell people on this about. Gotcha. gotcha. Other shit. Yeah. Right, Working on right. other things, but it's just like, a, you know. Yeah. We talk basketball. We talk movies. Yeah. What about this whole thing with Lamarcus, man? What, what's your feeling on that? Like, is that gonna? On what? And Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy going down for four weeks. Like a lot of the injuries starting to happen now. It's the end of the season. This Dude, the start... West is wide open. Yeah. Now it's wide. I watched the Clippers game last night with Harden, the Rockets. Yeah. Whew. Top two spots are locked. Yeah. Those are done. Yep. After that, it's a. Eight teams battling for six spots. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hypothetically, do you uh, think the do you think the Rockets can do it? Do you think they'll beat the Warriors? I mean, they'll have they might have no. a home court advantage. You don't think so? No, no. They, don't have, no they don't have enough. No. Yeah, I don't think so. Top in the seven bottom. game series, it's totally different. Plus, we've never seen them succeed in the playoffs. Paul or Harden, right? Paul especially. It's nothing against him. The guy's a supreme talent, but haven't seen in the playoffs yet. And the Warriors are on rough shot against everybody. Yeah. So I believe in what I've seen. Right. Just like LeBron and the Cavs, until I see them get unseated, I, I assume they're going to make it into the finals. Again. Yeah, well, they're, they've come back from the break. Yeah. Ex- going one win, one loss, one win, one loss. So exactly. they're still figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah, it takes time. But, uh, yeah. They um, still have LeBron. Yeah, I mean, when you have that. And, and a motivated LeBron is the Le- LeBron you want to have on your team. That's yeah. the one. That, that's the guy that's going to take care of business. So, um, yeah. Well, now he's surrounded by, as I heard someone else say, Surrounded by a bunch of guys that idolize him, like younger players that grew up watching him. Yeah. And they try so hard for him, and he gets reinvigorated seeing that. And he also yes. wants to be the leader to prove to them why they're in so much in awe of him. Right. And I was like, yeah, I could see that, where that's like a double motivation for him, plus making it back to the finals, winning oh. another championship, all that. But right. he needs extra motivation at this point. He likes to be that alpha dog, man. He digs it. People are looking up to him. Yeah, I think he likes it no matter what, but it's more yeah. fun when the team looks to you in awe. Yeah, that's true. You know I mean, <laughs> of the two situations. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I would take that every day. I as think any person going, would. Yeah, as opposed to being like, fuck you, old man. I'm not doing what you yeah, want to do. Yeah, or Isaiah being, you know, chirping and you yeah. went back for three games and be like, dude, shut up. <laughs> Seriously. Shut up. You just got on the court. You literally just uh, calling out, uh, uh, what's his name, Kevin Love? Yeah, Kevin Love. He got sick. <laughs> hey, hold on. Have you played a game yet at that point? I don't even remember. I think right. he was still out, possibly. Yeah. Just like, shut up. Some guys was going back and forth with me on Twitter about it when I say about Isaiah, and I was like, this is like if if I'm the, like, I was the, I ran my family's household, and then you, and then I, like, I go stay at your house, and I start telling your family members how to live their lives in your house. Yeah. Like, that's essentially what Isaiah was doing, because 
he it's, it wasn't his team in any way, shape, or he was used to being kind of like the alpha dog in at Boston. So he's going to come to Cleveland and start acting like he's the point guard, a, you know, extraordinaire to be telling people what to do. You're out of your mind. You got to get yourself uh, trusted by the players first and the teammates. It's yeah. Some bullshit. He he is unfortunately screwed out of a lot of money. Oh yeah. We'll see what happens in L.A., but... I don't see who gives him... I've, L.A.'s not giving him a long-term. No, no, no. Hell no. He might go back to Boston. Like, it's certainly a possibility. I would take if I was Boston. I, then where do you put him? If you, I mean, maybe Rozier's spot, but Rozier... I don't know, maybe. But I, wouldn't. I He wouldn't take... He wouldn't sit under no. Kyrie. It's Kyrie and, and Hayward's team now. Yeah. It's his. They yeah. don't... He'd be a malcontent in the locker room. Yeah, well, he might end up in Phoenix, man. You never know. Yeah, they could use all these life point guards. <laughs> They'd love their PGs, They man. do. <laughs> uh, did you see Black Panther? Did you finally go see Black Panther? I finally Panther? saw Black okay. Panther. Okay, thoughts? Do we want to talk about that? Oh, I would love to, unless you don't want to. Do you well, want I just, uh, people haven't seen it. Do oh, we want to put a spoiler on this? Uh, put a time card on it? Sure, like, do you want to do that? Year, do you want to do that? We can do that, I suppose. Right. Yeah, we'll put a spoiler here if you haven't seen Black Panther. A, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because it's made over almost a billion dollars. What are you? The, why are you holding out? And B... Um, we're going to put a spoiler tag here, so uh, this will be a few minutes, and then after that, I'll let you know when you can come back. Sweet. So what did you think? Uh, you want to mark the time now so you know where to oh, look? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll listen to it, too, but yes, 13. Okay. Um, I liked it. Yeah. That's it? <laughs> I did. It's it's one of those, Well, like, thanks for listening to spoiler alert. <laughs> well, the thing, I think Thor resonated with me so much is because... It was allowed to be tongue in cheek as well as still a superhero movie. And yes. On some level, I kind of need that right now because there's so many superheroes that I just don't care. Right, right, right. Everybody now has a superpower, and it sucks when this came along because it's a really well made movie, and it has yeah. its own sense of identity. And the color scheme is is great. What I don't understand: there's still graffiti in Wakanda. <laughs> well, it's stylistic graffiti, I think. <laughs> it was just sloppy. It looked like it'd been there for three, four decades. Graffiti at one point when when uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember Chadwick's <laughs> character's name. Yeah, T'Challa. T'Challa. Yeah, he's on the steps in the beginning of the movie when yeah. the, the, his love and he was like, "She's I can't leave my purpose." Which, first off, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? The most handsome guy in the kingdom, the richest, is going to be the future king. Is like, listen, you should stay here. You're going to shun him? You're going to shun him. Really? But at the same time, just like, whatever, it's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. But in my head, I was like, I'm, I'm not faulting the... It works beautifully for the script. It, it does. It's off really well. Yeah. It's well executed. I'm just standing there going, bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> if the princess was a 10 yeah. and was also the queen and a badass warrior and everything else, I was like, I want you to stay. Be like, you know what? I think I should stay. You know. Home. You know, it's nice to help other countries, but it's kind of nice here. It is. It's really it's nice. Pretty here. set up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I will help you, and we will just. This will be awesome. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I just think you know, it was really interesting. Yeah. And I thought it was beautiful to behold. I thought everybody acted really well in it. Yeah. Um, the action sequences were incredible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, certain aspects of it, like you know, he's going to lose. When he goes up to Michael B. Jordan, sure, the sure. hero has to fall, and he yeah. literally, the hero falls. And Michael B. Jordan, Jesus Christ, man. That boy's been lifting weights. Talk about working out to work out. How My long God. do you think the makeup scarification took? Well, I wonder if it was makeup scarification or, or CG. Digital. It's or, cheaper to do makeup on Or that. they created like a... A latex. Yeah, yeah la- that they just laid on him. what it is. That's probably what it is, right? Like yeah. a form-fitting latex. Or maybe they latex. did it in strips. Yeah. Like chunks, like this is the right left pectoral, the right pectoral. Right. Just like that way, there's still the curvature. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, I mean, putting those things up by hand, every single one, that would just take forever. It would make no, no you sense. You know what I was shocked by? What's that? Killing Circus so early. Uh, yeah. Because that guy doesn't hasn't died in the comics yet, Ulysses Claw. And so to kill him off that way, and I get the reason why you kill him off as an entryway into the situation. Yeah. But it was still it like shocking. Michael B. Jordan's character. Yes. And then gets him in the door. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, it it works for the story. Yeah. And in no way does it cheapen. It's like, ah, oh, it was cheap just to get to. It was like, no, that was earned because yeah. he's got to figure out a way in and mm-hmm. they're only going to trust. Other Wakandans, and who are you? We don't even know who you are, but we know all Wakandans kind of thing. Right. And, uh, yeah, no, I, it's just like, wow, what is this, the first 30 minutes, 35 yeah. minutes? Yeah, man. And he was awesome. He was great. Well, he looked like he'd been lifting weights himself. He looked like a badass. With and then out of nowhere, a gun just shit. pops out, and you're like, oh, what? What? 
He doesn't have an arm? What am I forgetting from the movies? Yeah, from Ultron. With, yeah. He got his arm ripped off That's what off I figured. It's like, yeah. okay, it had to be an Ultron. Yeah. I'm but it, on it. In the comics, though, his arm gets pulled off by T'Chaka, which is T'Challa's father. His arm gets cut off oh. by... Yeah, because he tries to lead a revolution, or tries to lead, like... He tries to attack T'Chaka or lead a revolution. And in the comics, he recruits or... Um, intimidates what do they call that where they make someone do so he forces um, Killmonger's dad uh, to be part of this revolution against T'Chaka yeah Claw does and so what happens is T'Chaka banishes them to like out of Wakanda so they end up in Harlem and Killmonger grows up in Harlem which is, but then he he gets that like because his dad dies in the attack against Chaka, okay. and he gets excommunicated to Harlem. But he gets angry, like he wants to get revenge against T'Chaka. He'll get revenge because T'Chaka's dead. He gets revenge against he wants to get revenge against T'Challa, his son, which is the Chadwick Boseman character. So they kind of made it work in a new scenario, right? Sure, because they had him carry out his vengeance in essence against Claw that he would like to have carried out in the comics. He carries it out in the co- in the movie. And then still creates that kind of um, anger be- with T'Challa versus him because of what T'Challa's father did to his father, so yeah. which is to kill him. So it's just it, they made it work in such a great way uh, while still giving a nice wink or shout out to the hardcore fans of the comics. So yeah. I really appreciated that. Uh, yeah, I mean it was uh, you know I liked Martin Freeman's character a lot. Oh yeah, really good uh-huh. Agent Ross. Yeah, because on the outside looking in. Uh, my wife and I saw the poster, and I was like, uh, just uh, looking at Martin Freeman. And like, I'm assuming he's another bad guy in this. The oh, way he looked in it, right? He was kind of looking over his shoulder, like you can't trust him. Yeah. Type of vibe they're throwing off. And I was like, huh, I wonder if he's going to be a villain too. Yeah. Then who Circus is? Right. And I know Michael B. Jordan is. Yeah. So is he also like part of the government side, aiding and abetting right. on some level? He ended up being on the government. He did. But it was, you know, he's just out trying to protect the interests of quote unquote good. Good. Yeah, and his uh, American accent's really good. I I like his American accent. Oh yeah, it isn't like what you hear other people go like they chop their words in certain ways. They deliver the American accent in a very pronounced way. And, but... <laughs> it seems like you're just attacking Ray Fiennes. With that. <laughs> maybe, a <laughs> so bit, maybe a little bit. A little bit. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I liked how Martin Freeman did it, and uh, he's he's a really um, surprisingly powerful energy in a movie when he's not mm-hmm. having to play goofy because i was watching hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy last weekend just randomly it was on one of the pay channels and just left it on for an hour because i hadn't seen it in a long time and i was like oh yeah i remember this guy because this is right out of the british office yeah you see you know, and how, how how would he going to know where his acting journey was going to take him that he was in a marvel he's now like essentially taking oh, the place dude. of agent colson in the marvel universe now. yeah yeah he's got that i mean he's got the lord of the rings right lord of the rings that's right just, just three of those I mean, yeah Guys had an interesting career. He does the Sherlock Holmes. Right. I've never seen well. him on, I watched the British Office. Yeah. A friend of mine gave me, like, he just burnt him onto a disc. Oh, it was nice. just this, just said Office, season one. And I've got one of those, and I've got season two. Right. Just, uh, I, I found it in a box. So I sent Gabe as part of his Christmas. I was like, dude, I got all these DVDs. You want Oh, them? nice. Just, boom, whatever the shipping is. Right. And I would send you, and I sent him. I don't know, like a hundred and something movies. Jesus. That had just been sitting in a box. There's like 50 DVDs, and then wow. I had a flash drive of, here's another 50 movies on a flash drive. Right, right. Plus a couple TV series. Just enjoy. <laughs> Educate yourself, son. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, he's trying to tell me that uh, The Leftovers is the greatest TV show of all time. Shut the fuck up. And I was like, have you seen X, Y, Z? And he right. just, no, no, no. And I literally started going down the list of, you haven't even gotten to things that aren't no. in the conversation, but were in the conversation before. Yeah. Like, you haven't even stepped up. It, I don't yeah. know if it's good. We, my wife and I are getting ready to maybe potentially start it. But uh, it was only three seasons. Oh, what? Uh, leftovers? leftovers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten was episodes it? a season, too. It's not long. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you know, I heard season two is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, I will watch it. But I was like, there's no way. It's not in the conversation. Well, it's like The Wire. you got to get through season one. And then you can enjoy the rest of the series. But you got to oh. get through season one. And get, Leftovers is the same through? way. Yeah, because... See, I was hooked. For me, it was... The, some of those guys, some of the cops in The Wire at the beginning were a little grating for me to be around and watch and listen to. And I didn't find them as interesting characters. Whereas, like, in The Sopranos, I was hooked from episode one. Like, with all those idiots in his crew, I still enjoyed them because of the, the portrayals. But in the, the, some of those cops in the Baltimore people, I was just like, fuck you guys, man. You know, so there was... But then it turned that corner in the second and season, you're just like, oh, this is something else now. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah, seasons one through four. Yeah. 
in the art, you know, the discussion for me for the best TV show I've ever seen. See, and you can, and we can say that, like, yeah. because you're right, we're not as young as Cave is. Yeah, it's only it's young. seen those things. But, yeah. Hey, congratulations for watching Leftovers. I don't think I would have watched that at that age, although I didn't have access to as yeah. many good TV shows. There was no Game of Thrones when I was in high school. No. Because I'm sure I'd have been watching that in like seventh grade, eighth grade, like yeah. starting early with that. We had Hill Street Blues. That's what we had. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, I mean. <laughs> Doesn't get as gritty. Kolchak, the Night Stalker, Kojak, and shit like that. So that was our lives. We should probably start the show. All right, fine. We'll start the show. <laughs> so, all right. So that's our, our, not, our I mean, our spoiler review of uh, that. How long so, did it go? You want to check oh, it out? Yeah. You know? Yes. All right. It was nine minutes. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. You we know, went we. On for nine minutes. <laughs> we like uh, nothing more than overindulgence in the <laughs> minutia. That's one of our hallmarks. I can't tell with us sometimes how long we go on things. So. No, I could have kept going, and I was like, we can't. This isn't even yeah. – we haven't even gotten to the goddamn show. <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, <laughs> this week's topic, as you can tell from the title, we're doing top ten drug cartel movies Yep. Um, because of Gringo coming out, uh, which is this fun little movie with David Oyelowo, uh, Charlize Theron, Joel Edgerton – and Charlotte Copley from District 9 and yep. a couple other films. And it looks like a really funny kind of fish-out-of-water, yeah, independent comedy type. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely going to go see it. At least my movie pass to go see it. But um, we we had originally picked another topic. And I think Matt and I, sometimes we like, we like the idea of a topic. <laughs> and then when the time comes, we realize we've bitten off more than we can chew. And we make the change. Maybe in the future, on yeah. one of those, yeah. we combine lists to help each other out. <laughs> That's and not a bad just, idea. It's just one on one because there are certain topics we want to get to, but between us, just like lists and on yeah. this one topic, there's five that make everybody's top ten that yeah. I've never seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like I, I don't have an education in this. Or I only have seven that I can choose from or whatever. Yeah, yeah and, yeah. and I, I think I'm pushing the limits a little bit on a couple of these. <laughs> yeah, we we would still be within the. Uh, uh, parameters of the show because the end of the the end of the show is us combining our lists. Combining lists, so yeah, we we're still going to combine our lists. Yeah, exactly. It's it a possibility. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So uh, you want to tell them how the show works, Matt? Uh, yes. Once John and I set a topic, we go our separate ways. Great individual top ten lists. Show back up here. I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece. Once we have revealed our personal top ten list, we create the shows between the two of us. Boom! Nice. This um, this is an interesting list because there's a lot of cartel movies that are mediocre. Yeah, sure. There's a lot. So mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, I could see you saying, I like a cartel movie because they can have fun. Yeah. And if, if I'm watching a cartel movie, I want to see some meat. You know okay. what I mean? I want to see that that world that yeah. I don't understand mm-hmm. and will never know. Just why I'm like, like the rest of us were fascinated with the mob. And other things, just like, I'm never going to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. So any story you can give me of that, I find very interesting because yeah. it's just so foreign a concept of life. Right. Um, and you want to keep it a foreign concept of life. Hell yes. <laughs> hell yes. Look, are there aspects that are alluring? Sure. sure. That's the whole point of it. It's the only reason they risk any of it. But yeah. at the same time, it's just like, you guys get caught or die on an alarming rate for a job. Yeah. So that's a little difficult. So mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to do that. And some of the way they torture you is terrible. Yeah. So... That's what I like. So I I, I included uh, a couple documentaries. Oh, but I put them I put at the bottom of my okay. list. That way, on the the final because yeah. when you tune in for this, you're tuning in for movies like fictional movies, right. or something based on a story. Yeah, but not a documentary. So that's why I was like, you know what? If you haven't seen these two, please go see these two. Kind of things. That's Number bad. ten for me: The Sins of the Father. Okay, what is that? I've never that, heard of that one. Okay, so that is a documentary that came out uh, about Escobar. Oh shit! From his son, his wife. The sons of some of the political leaders that he killed. Damn, it's really interesting. Okay, it's and it doesn't start at early Pablo. It starts because you know they have to deal with the aftermath. So right. the story kind of, on some level, works backwards. Okay. Like they do reminisce a little bit earlier when it was idyllic, but they get into the meat of this is what my dad was thinking and this is what wow. was going on in Colombia and, and from Escobar's son. It's like we had to move to here right. and then we had to like from his perspective yeah. which i had thought about but not really in the eyes of he's like nine right that's brutal he doesn't really understand what's going on yeah and then from the other kids the political like uh figures that got cut down their kids yeah and just there's still resentment from them but at the same time they've also they also know they can't blame the son they can't blame the mom it was pablo kind of thing you can read all this between the lines right it's just really fascinating because i just like the rest of the world liked Escobar. Yeah. 
He was all over my TV yeah. in the 80s and early 90s. Well, I kicked around the idea of putting on the two Escobars on the list because that 30 for 30 documentary. Yeah, it's which is, excellent. Which is excellent. But it does, it does, not fo- it does focus on the cartel aspect of it because that's the reason why this guy, the Yeah, player, why there's the, the soccer club, club yeah. and why the, you know, the situation that befell him happened. Exactly, exactly. But it was a TV doc, so I couldn't throw it on there, yeah. but I really, really wanted to because I agree with you. It's These documentaries, when they're really done, like Cartel Land, I don't know if that's on your list, if that's the other one, but like Cartel, yeah, that, my friend, hipped me to that one and it's fascinating it's scary as fuck balls to which watch. is my number nine yeah, boom nice right nice into segue. cartel so both docs cartel land is fascinating oh. because it's not from the perspective of the side that you would assume like right. you when you tune in for this mm-hmm. it's for the people struggling to expel on both sides yeah and you kind of understand even though they don't venture into the arizona you know uh borderland side yeah. too much yeah. patrol i understand their motivations better than the news reports and everything sure. like that. It, it humanizes them and you get a little background as to what compels a person right. to do this with their life. Right. And But the other side is fascinating. Yeah. But just all these pissed off townsfolk. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. Well, the thing is with uh, with this kind of stuff, you know, being Latino, you, you I don't want to say that. How can I say this correctly? Like you, you under, Like you talk to people or you know people in your world or in your community who are connected to it in some way shape or form not that they know not that they're part of it but connected like they know someone who knows someone who knows them so you hear stuff yeah in passing and so there's a certain kind of cultural connectivity to this thing that is unsettling because um it is so prevalent throughout latin american countries very powerfully so and especially me my parents being bolivian like that was something we always talked about, right? It was just like something that was there. You look at Colombia, look at Chile, look at these Argentina, look at all these different places. It runs through it all, you know. And so you just wonder how much of it is um, a matter of a, of the ability to be able just to stay alive. Because a lot of these governments have deals with these drug dealers, have to, and they fund the government economy. It's insane. Well, it opens with that gorgeous uh, because of the tie-in at the end. Yeah. Oh, with yeah, the guys yeah. saying, right. you know, if I could do this, if I could have a white collar job like everybody up there that was selling these drugs to right. and fly around and, and eat in nice places and whatnot, I would happily do that. We all right. would. Right. But this is how I make my money mm-hmm. kind of thing. And you're like, yeah. And then the flip on the end, I don't want to give it up because you don't yeah. notice it in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, they probably shield it, actually. Uh, just like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't fault them. No. You can't fault them. Well, that's the thing about it all. You know, it's easy to judge from distance, and when you have, when you're born into privilege or wealth or a certain type of, you know, uh, living. But when you're, this is the only option available to you. I'm not making an excuse for it. I'm just saying it's legitimate to feel that that's that's an option for you mm-hmm. in your world and in your life. When you when you've grown up with it, seen it, and seen other people do it over and over and over yeah. again, it's just like, a, yeah, this is a path, and I know what the potential risks are. Right, but. You know, this is a path. Yeah, You're like yeah, they make education in these power in these really deep third, third world countries. They make education so much more harder to acquire be, than anything else because they don't want you to be educated. They don't want you to be educated for the most part because if you become educated, then you impinge uh, on the middle class. You, impinge, you start messing up this whole dynamic that they've created within their countries, and it can be dangerous. And so, it's all of that. We we want everyone to be educated. We'd be great, but like the truth is, some of these ecosystems don't work with if if you have too many people trying to rise oh, yeah. out of their station. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's been the growing fear in China for more than like fifteen years. Or right, the growing middle class and what that's going to do to their international, you know, manufacturing and, and yeah. everything they do, which they're trying to just do more in house. Because someone's got to do those jobs. Someone has to, so ship it to Africa then, I guess. Yeah, I guess. And that'll be the last frontier. (laughs) That's fucking brutal, man. Yikes, man. But I mean, yeah, this is just a microcosm of other problems elsewhere. You can apply a lot of what's happening to them and just Mm -hmm. change the game a little bit, and it's still the same rules. Yeah. And you're like, it's just brutal to watch, to see if people have to arm themselves and then kick, they kick the... Fucking military out. Mm-hmm. Military. It was, is it police or military? I think it's military. I think it's yeah. the national police or whatever yeah, yeah, it is yeah, that shows up. They like get. They they confiscate all their guns and then the townspeople all surround them and riot. And they. I love it because they have a shot where it's <laughs> early on the head of the poli- people's militia and the head of the national police. That's what I'm yeah. just going to call it. Yeah. And he's like, "You're taking my guns. You're going to be giving me that gun back." And then they cut to later on. The guy's like. 
I have decided to give you back your guns. <laughs> You're like, well, did you decide that? Did you? Or do the 5,000 5, people surrounding you right now help persuade you of the fact that you were literally outnumbered 500 to 1? <laughs> Just, it's that grandstanding, man. You have to. Yeah, of course. You have to. You of have course. to create the illusion of power. Otherwise, no one respects the power at all. Very true. Yeah, that's why military sometimes has to act, unfortunately. Just the, we need we need to maintain the size of our dick in this con- <laughs> exactly, conversation. It exactly. is. That's all it is. Yeah. We have to prove them we can club them every once and again. Right. Uh, it's just oh, it's so ridiculous. But I loved it. I watched it. And I started laughing. I have decided to give you your guns back. The fuck you did. <laughs> oh, it's right, fucking what's, great. What's your number eight, man? Uh, my number eight is uh, clear and present danger. Uh, that's my number nine. Great. Let's Perfect. talk about it. Perfect. Um, you know, it's the from the CIA perspective yeah. of them helping fund different terrorist groups to overtake other terrorist yeah. groups and whatnot in South America and banana republics that we had set up. <laughs> Just it, you know, I like I like Harrison Ford. Yeah, uh, this is get, probably my favorite one of his Jack Ryan ones. This is my favorite one of his Jack Ryan's. Oh, uh, because I, I, I don't no, like, see. I think I like. I think I like Patriot Games I, better. Yeah, Patriot Games tough for me. I tried, I watched it the other day. I was like, oh, it's a little. It's a little boring for me, I'll be honest with you. Especially when they get back on the house and they're on the boat and all that kind of stuff near the end. I'm just like, Ugh. whereas clear and present, I like the idea of it, of the whole idea with Willem Dafoe and everything's happening. Him, oh, yeah, the stranded American president, and- president, stuff like that. I, I dug that, yeah. Yeah, and then the back and forth and the one guy has the ultimate signature from the president. Right. <laughs> that dude plays a great villain. Yeah, that. You just want to strangle him the whole time. I always loved the... The actor uh, that plays the Colombian that goes yeah. back and forth. Joaquin Delmeida. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, oh, he looks like the Spanish Jack Ryan. Yeah. You're like, they look nothing alike. <laughs> they look nothing alike. Wait, why do you even put that in? I don't understand at that point. You already cast this actor. Change the line. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really fun. Like, I like the, they do an Escobar light. Yes. Is the guy that guy who's in a million things? He that is. Guy's a it's actor. a great yeah. actor. Yeah, that 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 uh, batting scene is just fucking brilliant. I it is. It is. There's scene. so much tension in yeah. the entire scene. Yeah, and he's just swinging a softball bat. <laughs> That's all he's swinging. Yeah, but now, like after the Untouchables, you yes. know the menace of something as simple as that. Absolutely, especially in an innocuous setting in a pitching cage and yeah. whatnot. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it's a really, I'd say it's the funner of the two. Patriot Games to me seems yeah. more like because it's the end. Uh, fight sequences in that small house and whatnot. Yeah. The claustrophobia of the fear to me is more palpable as opposed to this when it's like shoot 'em ups action style. Right, right. So I think I just I like that better for Jack Ryan because I also like him on a submarine because of the tension and I love this. That's yeah. still my favorite one. Hunt for Red October. That's just number one. Far and away my number one. Right, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh uh, yeah, so, yeah, all right. Uh, I just like that, how dare you, sir? I just love all that kind of stuff he's going through and all that. I, I dig it. It's 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 a, it's a it's a side of Harrison Ford we we don't get to see often in movies where he has that kind of, like, pushback against another person in authority. Well, if he does after that, it's in, like, weird movies and you just don't, like, firewall. Yeah, exactly. That's something like, else. Yeah, that is. It's just, I don't know, he eventually kind of, like, for a six-year period made those types of movies. Yeah. I'm just like, damn it, man. Get off my plane. Yeah, like, but I can't. I can't fault you. I, I'm not living your life. You got to work. Yeah, you got to work. You just got to fly his planes, he man. Took the job. Yeah, you got to pay that gas. Yeah. Uh, what's your number seven? Uh, that was my seven. Oh, I thought that was your eight. Uh, that was my eight. I'm sorry. We only do our bottom three. That's right. Oh, uh, we're, we've had so many guests on. I know. Man, I forget. All right, my number ten is a masterpiece from Michael Mann. I don't mean that. Mike uh, Miami Vice. Yeah, I know. I, Some people don't like it. I tried to I watch it for this show because uh, yeah. a friend of mine recommended it. He's like, it's fun. And I got halfway through and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back and rewatch other things to make sure they have the right place. <laughs> I got, I think, like 70 minutes into it. I'll go back and finish the rest, maybe 80 minutes. It's an acquired taste, dude, and I get it. It's but just ridiculous. It's so like, it has this vibe of bad assery going through it, but it's so ridiculous all the events that are happening are so ridiculous around it. Yeah. And you, you get that it it was trying to be heat. It was trying to be collateral. Of course, the same director, Michael Mann. But it never got there because Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell absolutely fucking hated each other while they were shooting the movie. And it radiates. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They hated yeah, each other. Yeah, they have no real chemistry. No chemistry but yeah. they're, I mean, they're both pissed in the scenes. Yes. But they're wooden. 
Yeah. When they're in the same scene together. You don't believe that they would die for each other in any way, shape, uh-huh. or form, which is such an antithesis that makes sense. to uh, Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas on the original movie, original TV series, rather, that it's based on, right? But yeah. like, you do get some, like Kimberly Elise is pretty cool in the movie. She's badass. And you get a couple other the actors and actresses. And Tubbs is yeah, lady yeah, from yeah. what? She was in Bond. Yes. Skyfall. And uh, yeah. she's been in a few other things. Yeah. Kieran Hines is in it as well, who's great as their... Boss uh, Bur- Barry Shabaka Henley, who's the the guy. Oh, he's their boss, right? The Kieran Hines is the one running the whole operation. He, you know, yeah. He's well, he's the FBI. Yeah, FBI. Guy. This is where I I was like, <laughs> I, I think I'm done with this one. It gets to the point, so yeah, they're gonna do the first drug run. Yes, and no, oh, no, the first one is complete, mm-hmm. and he's like, all right, we got, we can shut him down, and he's like, no, no, we're gonna do the second one, and then we're gonna keep going. And the FBI is like, no, you're not. And right. it's just like, we're going to do this. So somehow then the chief of police. They're all swaggering through it. Counterman's like, oh, really? You're going to have to run up the floor, like yeah. the flagpole and the, the FBI bullshit, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> then they turn around and they go to walk away. And uh, Jamie Foxx is like, yeah, I know, man. Sometimes you get so deep, you don't even know which way is up. And you're like, you guys have been undercover for like two weeks? Two weeks? Two weeks and you're giving edicts to the FBI saying, this, no, we're, we're staying with this. <laughs> Which he had just slept with the yeah. wife of the boss yeah. and cut himself a long-term deal getting, well, he, what is it, 17% is what she offers, 18% yeah. is what she tells, so maybe she's taking 1% for she's herself. She's taking a little bit for herself, yeah. Uh, it's just, so th- you do one job, yeah. you do a really small job, you sleep with her, and now suddenly you're getting 17% <laughs> of every shipment coming in. Well, that's the thing about the movie, and, and I want to say this, it's Naomi Harris, not uh, Kimberly Elise, that's my okay. bad, Naomi Harris, but like, what I enjoy about it is the vibe of it. It's the vibe of it I, that, yeah. that keeps me going, but because you're right, Matt, logistic, or logically rather, it is like ridiculous. It's like it's also coincidental. Yes, and they all are just There's walking no around being so badass all the time. But the truth is, the badass, the most badass motherfucker in the whole movie is the cartel guy. He is oh, yeah. so just like matter. I don't of think fact they do blinks. Scary as shit, man. Just every scene, his mm-hmm. eyes are open. That fucking beard of his is so badass. And John Ortiz, is great, who's his henchman, he's a great job. John Ortiz is a fantastic a million character, a million things he's been in. The curly hair, all the Jerry girl, the fucking yeah. glasses. All of it is really, he's really creepy in a fucking role. But like that dude, the guy who plays the drug dealer, is actually a very well-known Spanish actor. And he plays those kind of characters that are just badass. And well, he crushed it. He it. just has that essence. Yeah. He yeah. Did. And they never catch him. You know, in the end, the whole thing go, rolls around. They never really get him, you know. and oh, well, but, I haven't seen it. You know, oh, that's right. Well, Don't care. That's I'm fine. Sorry. They didn't, didn't catch him. Sorry. It makes Spoiler sense. Alert. He was the best part of the movie <laughs> that I'd was. seen up to that, like stealing every scene. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding because I was watching it when he first shows up in the back of the limo. I swear to God because they said, I think, one line and the camera was kind of from their perspective. Yeah. Slowly you know, moves in on him. Yeah. I thought it was Ty Burrell with a shaved head and a fake oh, beard. It shit. sounds like Ty Burrell yeah. doing a Spanish, like, inflection on his tone. Yeah. For a half a second, I was like, Ty Burrell, oh, no, it's not him. <laughs> it was yeah, but I was like, what the fuck? Okay. Was Modern Family Michael Mann's favorite show? <laughs> like, it killed- just debuted 2011 when this came out, I think? <laughs> that guy killed Ty Burrell. That's what that guy did. He yeah. Like it. Uh, what's his I'm name? I'm surprised I haven't seen, like, that dude. Luis Tosar, that's his name. All right, the yeah. evil dude, uh, the bad guy from The Raid. I figured that guy would be oh, yeah, the yeah, U.S. Yeah. markets in some capacity. Yeah, it's weird, man. Some, sometimes they don't want to, though. Sometimes they don't want to come over, man. Maybe not. I've seen that happen a number of times through the years of foreign people. They try it, and they're like, nah, this ain't my jam. I'm cool where I'm at, you know? So, Like uh, the girl from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Zhang Ziyi, she never came over and did American shit. She stayed where she was, and she did her stuff there. She's never come over she and done American. Yeah. America came to her. She set up. You know, yeah. yeah. So, all right, that was my number ten. Yeah. So then, my number nine is uh, clear and presentation. We said and my number eight is City of God. I couldn't. Okay, tell me, well, tell me, because I went back and forth about it as well. It doesn't seem a large enough criminal enterprise. Okay. For, to qualify as a cartel. Okay. That's where because I, I struggled with that one, and I was like, but I mean, he doesn't even have control of his favela. Right. He's warring with another dude, so yeah. to be you know. On the scale we're talking, usually it's like international, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. But still dealing with large numbers, big business, doing something, payoffs. Right. Like you can tell there's a structure there. Right. Well, that's the thing with the uh, same thing with Gomorrah. I was going back and forth on Gomorrah. Okay. If you ever seen that Italian film where they do that, it was kind of like the. It's one of those I should have seen. Yeah. It's on my list. It's an unsettling fu- fucking film. It's really good. It almost feels like a documentary. It's that 
it's not real, you know. And so, but but this, I, I like this. I I struggled putting it on the list, but I was like, no, I feel like I should put it on the list and talk about it uh, because I enjoy the film so much. And I discovered it late, like I didn't see it till like last year for the first yeah. time, and I like the idea. Of, it's a new approach to the kind of like drug cartel type, drug slash cartel type movies. Okay, and I enjoy what he's going through and the journey between the two friends, the differences, yeah. and the stuff that they explore. And yeah, you're right. He's not in charge of his own thing, but there's, there's like the warring stuff that happens. That's part of the business a little bit. So I enjoy the plus yeah, the technical, 100%. technical aspect of the film. The film itself it's gorgeous. is an enjoyable film to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. beautifully shot. Yes. Like the cinematography is really interesting as a mm-hmm. choice. Yeah. Uh, especially when they're looking back over the whatever trio it is. Yeah. The, yeah. How is it? It's like the tender trio or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's done like the, the color palette there is... Like uh, sepia toned ish almost. Yeah, it's got a slight brownish or yellowish kind of hue to all of it, like yeah. reminiscing looking back. And you fast forward today, and it's a much bleaker, darker, grayer, and bluer kind of existence. Yeah, as they're going through a lot of shots and whatnot, mm-hmm. and just tonally, it takes you to a different place. It's, it's I struggled. I wanted to put it on the yeah. list. Yeah, in the end, I decided to because I was. Um, I didn't like the other two choices I had, 11 and 12. And I was like, nah, I kind of like City God. I'll make a case for it. it. And people may not like it, but I'll make a case for it. Maybe it on my list, too. She's like, well, that one's locked in at 10. Yeah. And like other ones are fighting for different positions. That yeah. one's making the list. I'm talking about that one for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, what's your number seven? So my number seven, um, get ready to say the words punt. Oh, shit. Are you ready? You ready? Lock and load. Scarface. Yes. Massive punt. But all right. <laughs> I figured. I figured. <laughs> yeah. And number uh, six, then, for me, is uh, American Gangster. Uh, slight punt. Okay. All right. All right. What do you got at seven? Traffic. Whew, that's called a punt. <laughs> All right. I have my reasons. That's got a punt. I have okay. my reasons. That's then fine. My, my number six is End of Watch. Okay. That's my number five. Yeah? yeah. Good. Dude. What a film, man. This, what happens when, because Mexico operates here yep. in Los Angeles yep. and other pl- places in this country. Yep. And the Sinaloa cartel. Put a hit out on two cops, man. <sighs> that doesn't end well for anybody. The whole fucking film is them trying to navigate that situation as best they can. And you, as the viewer, you want to believe in the happy ending. That you do. it's possible. You do. Just that it's possible. And fuck, it really isn't by the time they get to the end of that and movie. It's, dude. it's so earned. Yeah, it is. It is so earned. Pena's character fighting that dude and then not charging him for, uh, what is it, aggravated assault yeah. of an officer or whatever it is. Look, honor, you know, there, there's still a gentleman's agreement here. I'm taking you in for the one thing, not for this. This right. is between, between two men. Yeah. I'm not going to fuck with you. Yeah. And then seeing the dividends that pays off for him. Yeah. Look, now we're basically two dogs at leashes. Yeah. Respecting the other. That's all that is. <laughs> but we, there's respect there. There's a commonality at least. Yeah. Uh yeah, but just building him up and then the bond between him and Gyllenhaal and Gyllenhaal doing this on the GI Bill. He's going to yeah. like night school or something. He's yeah. taking a film class, so he's taping all of it. And it's a perfect device to have us be able to see this story. Right, right. And just, I mean, just so good. It's incredible uh, acting work between them and also David Ayer. And this is what breaks my heart about David Ayer right now because, of course, he got he kind of got fucked over in Suicide Squad. And then this bright film was not good. The one on Netflix. I thought it was all right. But I like but I loved Fury. I thought Fury Oh Fury was, was awesome. That's fantastic. It's awesome. So I'm like, where is End of Watch and Fury David Ayer? Where did that fucking guy go? Yeah, he's still in there. Because he was a badass. He's still in there. All right. He decided to, you know what, I'm gonna make a big huge picture in Suicide Squad. Yeah, but then he got fucked. And he went that south wasn't of his cheese. Fault. That exactly. wasn't his fault. And then uh, I'm not I don't know about anything about Bright other than I watched it. Yeah. Well, he owns that thing. He wrote, he wrote it, directed it. He said, well, I don't know if he wrote it, but he directed it, and he said this is his vision. So he was not fucked with with this movie. But with Suicide Squad, they took it away from him, cut it in half, and did whatever. They, terrible movie. I don't blame him for that. But this, it worries me. I need, an, like, Joel Carnahan. Joel Carnahan came out with NARC, uh, and I loved it, and then he didn't quite get there again. And so I worry that Aver, Ayer is one of these guys that, because he was younger, he but he's hungrier. He's two got under it. his belt, though. Yeah. That's, that's where I still yeah. give him credence. And... Two somewhat disparate stories. Uh huh. It's still about the bond between a group of people, a group of guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, two in one instance and five. Yeah. Is it five in the tank? Six yeah. in the tank? There's a lot. Well, uh, it's John Bernthal, Michael Pena again. Uh, LaBeouf, Brad Pitt. LaBeouf, Brad Pitt. 
Uh, I, there's got to be another. There's got to be another. Yeah, isn't there another? Yeah, I think you're right. There is one more guy, but I can't remember who it is. Who's like freaking out all the time? Yeah, but at that inner, so maybe if he goes back to a story like that, that it's just like a small group of people put into a situation that sucks. Yeah, and he's really good at extracting just the drama from that and finding Uh humor in it at times. But it's a very, it seems like a real experience. Like I've never seen the tank's perspective right that up close. Right, having to actually live with these fucking people. Literally inside well, a tank. It's it, for me that film is almost like a pseudo Saving Private Ryan because like uh, uh, the character of that uh, LaBeouf plays is essentially essentially what that um, I forget Jeremy Davies plays in Private Ryan where they drag him off doing maps and throw him into the battalion yeah. to fight or to be part of this platoon that, or squad that's going to get these guys. The same thing with this kid. They drag the kid into this and they bust his balls and fuck with him and do all these things to him and really unsettle him. But by the end, you know, he's kind of heroic by the end because of his experience with everyone else in the tank, you know, and keeping him alive. But with the, with the, with End of Watch, that's the thing about, the, I think one of the most powerful things about the movie are the flashbacks or the scenes with his, with Anna Kendrick, with his, the yep. marriage, all that stuff, because in other cop movies, for example, like he, you see it and you're like, okay, I guess we need a scene like that. But in End of Watch, it really gives you more levels to these char- these people to connect to their characters, to connect to them as you watch them. You yeah, know? you really feel for them, so that when the end happens, it's fucking tragic. It's it's fucking tragic because you think they really had a shot, like they really had a shot, you know, and all that's going to be lost because of what happened, you know. Yeah, it's brutal. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely brutal. Very much so. And I think because, you know, what you described before, they just pay lip service to having a woman in these movies. Yeah, yeah, Kendrick, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Usually in these Oh, usually, right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and in this one, it's just like, no, she's a, a three-dimensional character. Yeah. And they're interacting as, as two people, you know, do. Yeah. Like, I believe their relationship and the back and forth and then Pena trying to, like, school him through... Yeah. Like, listen, bro, I've been there. This is what you got to do <laughs> kind of right. thing. That's right. It's a bond, like, it helps bond them and makes their friendship even stronger. Absolutely. And that video that she makes for him. Yeah. Oh, man. Fuck, dude. So anyway, it's if you haven't seen End of Watch, and even if we ruined it a little bit for you and you still haven't seen it, trust me, we aren't doing it justice enough for to ruin it for you. So you go back and you watch that movie. It will affect you a lot to watch that movie. And it's some great, great acting between those two dudes. Yeah. Um, all right, that was my number six. So that, that was your number five. five. So, so what's your five? Oh, uh, the French Connection. Okay, not on my list. What? I don't. For some you don't reason, I don't think cartel? of it as uh, yeah. Well, he's running a whole cartel out of France. I, I you believe you've only seen it yeah. once. Oh, okay. All yeah, right, fair for enough, our car chase show. Uh, yes, three years and change ago. It's <laughs> the only time I've ever seen it. Our first show, man. That was our first. Yeah, it was show. our first show. Jesus Christ! I had never seen it before, and I was like, "Yeah, there's a lot of car chases." Yeah, that's about. That was most of the movie to me. Is that when I look back on it now, three years, four years later? Yeah, it's just like I remember all the car chases and some of the back and forth, and yeah. he's not a likable character. Well, yeah, Popeye Dole. That was the way. I'm not saying the character isn't enjoyable to watch. I'm saying he's not a likable yeah. character. Right. He's kind of racist. A bit rough yeah, around the edges. R- he's completely rough around yeah, the edges. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, in, anyway, the, the 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 Fernando Rey is I think, I think is the actor's name who plays the French guy who is who he's trying to uh, capture and cat because he stumbles upon this whole drug deal that's like it's like a, a whole cartel out of out of uh, uh, out of France and the things he's doing it's international it's okay. this international cartel of drugs and they're smuggling the drugs in the um, in the cars mm-hmm. inside like the lining of the cars okay and and the whole time Hackman is trying to prove this. And he's like going against these people who don't want to believe him or don't think it's the truth or think because all these rich actor guys are coming over well, with these cars. That's what he's using. This guy, he's finding these down on their luck, famous people, and he's helping them out of their debt. And in exchange, they ship uh, their cars when they go travel to the States under the guise that it's their cars. But there's drugs all through the lighting of the cars. So it's just brilliant. Well, it's also through New York, which yes. is corrupt as all hell. Yep. Uh, the only better place would have been put it in Chicago. Yeah, sure. Like for that Chicago time, or possibly work. Detroit or something. But still, I think, I right. mean, a movie that I, we punted from, we're going to talk about the fact that how corrupt yes. the cops were in yeah. New York. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a realistic depiction of maybe you can't convince people because they don't want to hear it because they already know it. Yeah. And they're turning a blind eye to it. They're getting paid for that. Right. Uh and you see that happen because there were some, there are some corrupt cops in the movie, and some, and obviously he's not, and Roy Scheider's partner isn't, and you know he has to fight all all the stuff Hackman does to try to be. And he's really much, he's very much the definition of an antihero. Um, and mm-hmm. eventually, um, the the thing is, if you haven't seen the movie, I don't want to ruin the ending. I guess I don't want to ruin it too much, but like 
you know, eventually it's, it's a frustrating situation for him. And so as you see him go through the progress, you're just like, man, he's, oh, he's just that one extra st- half a step behind and it makes all the difference. Even though he's still getting these arrests and getting closer and closer, he's just constantly half a step behind. Yeah. And I love uh, the way the film ends. And it's, it's so if you haven't seen French Connection or if you've only seen it like Matt once, go back and see it. It's really a good fucking movie. All right. What's your number four? Yeah. My number four is uh, No Country for Old Men. Uh, yeah, my number three. Let's talk about it. Perfect timing. Boom! Um, Friendo. I mean, they never explicitly state, I don't believe that it's a cartel, but it's... It's pretty implied. Well, it's two two Mexican gangs, and there's a couple million dollars. Yeah, when, when the boys show up in suits, it's a motherfucking cartel. Yeah. Yeah. In 1980. Yeah. Somewhere in South Texas. Yeah. Near a border in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> this this is cartel business. That's just all there is At to it. At least the beginnings of the cartel business, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. When it was in its infancy, yes. as it's crossing over and getting bigger and bigger. $2 million, too, in 1980, I'm sure with inflation, that's worth like five in today's money. Or At something. least, Six. Yeah, yeah. yeah, something ridiculous. Uh, so you just assume yeah. that this was two <laughs> cartels, drug deal went bad, yeah. or something, or an exchange of some kind. Yeah. Uh, but it is just a riveting film. It doesn't go higher because of that. Like, I don't know specifically. I just inferred. I agree. I agree. Uh, because you, it's really the film. Uh, he's hired by the cartels to find this money, to get this money. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Javier Bardem's character, he's hired. Anton Chigurh is his name. He's Anton hired. Chigurh, yeah. But like, uh, you don't get the sense that the cartels are like, you know, it's like a prevalent thing. But you know it's there. Like when he goes to Stephen Root, Stephen Root is part of the cartel. A oh, yeah. whole thing. It's a big business. Yes, very much so all around. Yeah, and it's so, it's like uh, season two of Fargo, that crime scene. Ah, uh, yes. They have like a board room and whatnot. The same type of thing. This is an mm-hmm. enterprise and our enterprise, unfortunately, for the general populace is crime. Yeah. So we're into import, export, this, murders. We do it all. It's You're a right. one-stop shop for your a high-end crime. And it's all connected in, into the States and in Mexico. So yeah. it's all there. Uh, you know, they're all working together to make this thing happen. And so you get all... And it's, and it's full of these incredible characters. I mean, even Woody showing up for the small part he does is, is incredible. The, the scenes that they... they I mean, the Coen brothers, do, they always have these incredible scenes in their movies. I mean, that scene between him and the, the toll booth guy, uh, the custody, yeah. that's such a great scene. Like, do you think I'm a fucking idiot, man? And he just says to him, he's like, you know, do you know who gets across here? People I trust, people I believe, you know. And so you see all these little scenes that they go on, and then the stuff with Kelly McDonald and all of that, and and Anton Chigurh is, is he's the inevitability of death that you cannot negotiate with, and it's yeah unsettling as it's hell. It's the you know, only the time uh, I know I've said on past shows, but we yeah. have new listeners. It's the only time where I think the movie is better than the book. Uh huh. I read the book. Years before this came out, and I yeah. heard they were doing it, I was like, well, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the book, but the problem is the sheriff's part at the end, you don't, at least I didn't when I read it, get the same longing I did from Tommy Lee Jones just kind of looking out, surveying, going, asking himself ultimately the same question. Is there, was there any point to my existence? Yeah, yeah. Whatsoever. Yeah. Because this crime is still going on. Did I make any impact in this world? Because it doesn't feel like it. Well, and that's what's powerful, Matt, is the movie... Most movies suffer trying to have one main storyline. Yeah. This movie has four, and it's it's they're effective well, all got, the way through. Shigur, you got Josh Brolin, uh huh, and then uh, Tommy Lee Jones, yeah, Tommy Lee Jones, and then Kelly McDonald. They're all okay having their separate like storylines through the whole movie because Kelly gets Kelly gets like that scene near the end where she could possibly get out of the whole situation, and she's the one's been telling him. Stop fucking doing this shit. What's yeah. wrong with you? Get out of this shit. Lou Allen? Yeah. Exactly. Isn't that his name? Yeah, Lou Allen. <laughs> Lou. And, uh, but Tommy Lee is c- confronting his mortality and his age, and Chikor is like on this journey, and of course Josh Brolin is trying to figure this out, and I think it's some of the PTSD coming out of Vietnam. Like He's got this whole thing going on in his mind. His ability to survive is incredible, but in the end, you know, it's, what's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah, but unfortunately, his compassion got him into this. Yes. And that is a terrible lesson to learn about life sometimes. <laughs> it's true. It sucks. Like, when he's going back, man, you watch him like, you shouldn't be doing this. Yep. In the theater watching this, going, this doesn't end well for you. Yep. Just, as soon as he gets out of that bed, you're like, this is the end of the fucking thing right yeah, here. Dude, it's unfortunate, but you didn't shoot that guy. No. They're all dead. Yeah. You giving him some water, were you going to take him to the hospital next? You're not. No. So why are you taking him water? Yeah. 
Why? Just Stupid. watching it. If, but you know he's doing it. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to stop it. And that's, you already care. You're already that invested in mm-hmm. the story that quickly. Yeah. Well, it's a good. That's why you cast good actors and they just bring that energy to it, man. Yeah. Well, to me, it's Javier Bardem is oh, just an interesting, compelling devil. I've never seen just a bowl cut look so menacing. Yeah. Just brutal. When he's having that exchange with the gas station attendant in the very beginning. Oh, he's man. like, flip a coin, pick a side, and just like the back and forth. And he's, a, he's like judging the dude's life yep. bone deep. Just by asking a couple uh, yeah. sentences. He gets somehow right to the heart of the matter. Decipher that your life is as meaningful as this coin flip. That is, that is your judge, jury, executioner, St. Peter, yeah, and 17 other things all wrapped into one, man. His cough laugh when homie goes, <laughs> "My, is this my wife's? father's business or something like that and he goes you you married into this i was just like damn just the judgment and the guffaw is perfect oh yeah what a great film uh that was your number four yeah that was my four oh, so my, my number four is american gangster okay yeah not on your list no no was that my number six? oh that was number six right yeah, we punted sorry sorry yeah what a great film i really enjoyed this and it's one of these unusual Ridley Scott films. Like, usually his films have more of the scope and, uh, what, what am I trying to say? More of the majesty of film, right? This is just one of these films that's very on the ground. Yeah. It is on the street the whole time, even though they go to Vietnam and the poppy fields and you have, you know, like, uh, uh, what is it, Ho Chi Minh? Who is it? Who's involved with it? I forget the Vietnamese guys that well, he yeah, gets it's, involved with. It's, you'd assume it's like uh, the North Vietnamese, but not the government. right. Just like, uh, you know, I grow poppy. Yeah. I grow drugs. Yeah. I'm, you know, I have my own security force, my own army, but I don't war, you know, kind of thing. Right. Because he does come off as menacingly benevolent. Yes. As he's walking around. Yes. Like, mm, you know what I mean? One of those guys, if he smiled at you too hard, you'd be like, I, I got to smile back. Oh, shit. Because this is socially <laughs> awkward, but you're fucking creeping me out over there with your Grinch, you know, grin. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. You just got it. <laughs> but it's a story I didn't know. No, neither did I. I it's had no a true idea. story. Yeah. True story based on a real guy. I mean, obviously, they have to, to, to fictionalize or sure. uh, embellish certain aspects of it, but it's a true story. Yeah, man. There's another. The guy that was in uh, uh, Miami Vice is in this. He plays the other detective with Russell Crowe, the curly-haired dude that you're talking about from Miami Vice. Oh, John Vice. Ortiz. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in this. That's yeah, right. Yeah, he's the junkie that gets him in trouble. That's right. At the very beginning. Yeah. That's right. He tries to rob the drug dealer, doesn't want to give up his drugs, so he shot him. In the beginning of the beginning of this movie or the beginning of the of other? Of American Gangster. Yes, yes. That's yeah, right. Because that he's him. sitting there, like, there's snot coming out, like, he's just so <laughs> high, and he shot the dude, and it's corrupt New York, 1970s, and we're like, yeah. we'll just cover this up. And everybody's going crazy outside. They're bringing the stretcher and cover him. Yeah. So that way they can't see that he's dead. Otherwise, there'll be a riot on their hands. <laughs> oh. By the way, um, I was watching a movie the other day that I hadn't seen in a few years, but it's from the 90s. And that guy, that John Ortiz guy, is in the movie. What's it in, called? In Carlito's Way. Oh. He's, I, I know I've seen it, but I, oh, okay. I, I don't remember it. For those who, wa- who it's know. It's Pacino. Who, yeah, but he's Pacino's young cousin that gets him into that shootout in the bar at the beginning of the movie. Dude, it's been years. Yeah, like, man. That sparks a vague bell. Okay. That's a film I go back to all the time. I yeah. love him helping him out on the movie. I remember when it came out, and I had to wait yeah. a couple of years, and then it was like on a VHS or something, and yes. I watched it kind of thing. Yeah. It's a weird little film. But anyway, John Ortiz is so young in that movie, I couldn't believe it was the same guy. And I was watching him, and I was like, shut the fuck up. And I just looked it up, and I was like, oh, that's incredible, man. That dude's been working for a long time. Yeah, He's man. good. Respect for a Latino actor to work this long and constant and get good roles. Yeah. Respect. He yeah, he's not he playing make a, big deal a, out of a it. shitty stereotype nope. or anything like that to work. Which, nope. if that's what you got to do, I understand it sucks. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, he's always like his his characters, no matter how flawed they are. Yeah, there's always some humanity to them on some level. Yeah, I remember him in the drop. He was great in the drop. That Tom Hardy film. Oh yeah, he's, he's the cop. He's the detective. about that. Yeah, yeah. He, he pops up in all these places. He's great. Good little movie. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yes, it was. Um, so this film is so expand. It, it is. I guess it's it's expansive in scope. Not necessarily in look, I guess, is what I was getting at with Ridley, because they go all these different places. Yeah. And then like, the, the music it's, is really great. It seems like Ridley Scott was trying to do his best Martin Scorsese. Yeah, that's a good point. It still has his aesthetic. Yeah. Like, with the way the shots are set up and whatnot, there's mm-hmm. still a crispness to the scenes that Scorsese would have, like, dulled the edges a little bit on. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, but within this, like, it's more of kind of like a just a stark, almost moving Polaroid. Yeah. Like, here's what was going on. Uh, and you get two really powerful actors, essentially in their primes with Denzel yeah, and I Russell. I would say both in their prime, right? And so when they have the moments of like 
you know, con- conversation with each other and then eventually cooperation, it they're magnetic as hell to watch. Oh, yeah. Separately in their storylines and then when they're together. You know, I mean, the way Denzel, bless you, man, the way Thank Denzel you. runs that whole th- crew, you know, and Chuetia Ejiofor is his, like, brother in that crew. And yeah, he's part of the the whole group that he brings yeah, up. Yeah, family, essentially his yeah, family's brothers his family, and shit. family, extended yeah, yeah, cousins yeah. and all that stuff because yeah. it's a huge enterprise. I mean, just shipping back kilo upon p- kilo, I don't even know how much yeah. of heroin in empty caskets. yeah. From the Vietnam War. Yeah, that's, that's terrible, man. I mean, when you see it, you're like, well, that seems kind of obvious because no one's going to check a casket. Right. Like, once you see it, but I can't even fathom, like, it's so crazy to me to think, like, somebody had that thought mm-hmm. and then convinced another somebody that this is a good idea. And they went, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you going to pay me? Exactly. Right, let's do it. And how many of those somebody's are there? Just, yeah. I, only a couple. Well. And just like, oh, my God. So then there, and then they have to go to the other side, on the receiving side. Right. we got to find guys that work at this facility on these days. So they're other military, but we got to get them on board. Just exactly. Like, and that's just the beginning of it. Right. Then you have a distribution network. You have the processing. You have the accounting side. You have right. like, oh, my God. And then you got to worry about your product being on the street. And like yep. he has that scene with Cuba Gooding Cuba Jr. Gooding. Yeah, where he's like, don't put that, don't put that name on, my, on the product. If you're going to cut it down and, and, and yeah, dilute it, it, yeah, don't you put my name on that because my name. And it's exactly. so funny. It's brand awareness. Yes. And brand loyalty. And I've built that up. He, he, is, he started a Fortune 500 from the ground up. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, he took over a, a, a crime enterprise. He was the driver, and everybody scoffed at him at first. The driver? Yeah. yeah. Like kind of thing? <laughs> and he takes over, and he turns them from nickel and dime yeah. to billion-dollar entity. Yeah. It's something that, like, it's a great flip with the cop eventually, and, and he's telling oh, yeah, his buddy's yeah, yeah. telling Crow, hey, don't mess with him. He assumes it's going to be the mob boss. Yeah. He says the mob boss. is like, no, it's Frank something, isn't it? Frank yeah. Lucas. Frank, Frank Lucas, I think Frank you're right. Frank Lucas. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, and he's like, who is that? I have no idea. That guy, he had so much juice yeah. so quickly just because he became the most popular. He had that little confab out in the country with the uh, Italian godfather. Yes. So, oh. oh. So little respect yeah. through respectful words. Just trying to undercut each other at all times. It is great. Yeah, it's a good movie if you haven't seen it. It is. It uh, just doesn't ultimately, like, it doesn't hit. Yeah, it doesn't have that magic that no. you, you need it to have. It's a great movie, yes. and it's a great story. Just you're expecting, like, a final one-two because uh-huh. it's been so, you know, a nice drum roll up until then. It's yep. just like it never hits the crescendo. Yeah. Yeah, which would agree. have propelled it into, like, excellent. We'd be talking about it. Trying to fit it into like mob somehow. Absolutely, it's in the mob. Uh, not even somehow. Yeah, he just—it's a different form of the mob. Absolutely. Uh, all right, that was my number four, right? Uh, so, well, if it was your number four, yeah. Yeah. What's your number three? My number three is Blow. Oh. Oh, you don't have Blow at all. I don't have Blow at all. Oh man, fuck! That's a huge mistake. <laughs> that is, dude. I had Blow on my Listen, list. How does? How do we get Pablo Escobar? <laughs> how do we get the Cali Cartel? Listen, Medellin. I apologize. Blow should be on my all list. of that. I think it was probably six or seven Blow, and I moved it out to put City of God in. That was my mistake. All right, Blow is definitely on my list. Let's just say it was on my. It should have been on your in list. In retrospect, it's yeah, number it's three on my list. Yeah, fair, fair. Because all the things, like all the stories and whatnot, you start thinking, well, how do you get all that drugs in here? And here's one of the guys that just yeah. kind of organically stumbled into. A guy named George. Yeah. Yeah. Boston George. <laughs> Boston George. Uh, and he's <laughs> smuggling just pot and then eventually goes to federal prison. Yeah. Like, you know, what do you say? Like, I went in with a bachelor's. And came out with a master's in criminology yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> and he comes out. He goes down the first day. He's on parole for a day. And he, he oh, yeah, all right, I'll go down to Columbia and move yeah. 15 keys. And just after that, it's on. Right. And you're like, oh, my God. The film is so good. Depp is, you know, I know Depp is like, you know, uh, getting shit now. And rightfully so if these things are true about him and Amber and all, Amber Heard and all this kind of stuff. But who knows? But there's a, there's a, there's a period of, of this time. Where he wasn't a punchline man, and this is yeah. this is war- this he put is put out these interesting movies. work after interesting work. Yeah, because he had made his bones on the independent side of things. He wasn't necessarily the, being cast in these bigger roles, but even Donnie Brasco was not your typical gangster movie. He was picking these yeah. films that were a little done more atypical, independent, or yeah. you know, uh, taking a, a risk on a character to do something interesting, yes, and different, and it worked out for him. Yeah, for like, a number more of years. often than not, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he just kept being able to, you know, at least get a triple. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, like, if not a home run. Yeah, right? if not a home run. Even if the movie's just okay. Yeah. Just like, I liked all his choices, and mm-hmm. it was really good. He was engaging the whole time. Doesn't matter. Even in bad movies now, I still like Black Mass. Uh-huh. Oh, God, he's fucking great he is Black Mass. so amazing in it. Yeah. The movie as a whole is meh. Yeah, it doesn't quite get there. But his performance alone, yeah. it's like Jake Gyllenhaal and Southpaw. Is that movie good? <sighs> no. I can poke holes in it, and it makes logically... Sure. There's so many scenes that don't make any sense. As soon as she dies, the film goes... Uh, goes it, it was it was just like so many things after that are unexplained yeah why did you even put that in because yeah. there's no payoff for it and that's yeah. a big thing yeah that is a big thing but his performance in it is stellar yeah it's absolutely stellar yeah uh sometimes that happens yeah sometimes I, but depp you know in these earlier years in movies like blow where yeah. he's bringing to get to life a character that why do i care outside of like the story could be interesting yeah and you made a compelling individual uh, it's really good. Well, that's why when people try to try to t- try to dismiss him, as you know, like Benny and June, and yeah. fucking Don Juan DeMarco, and the Pirates movies, they think he has the like this kind of more sensitive, vulnerable side. But there is a master actor in Depp because there's no way he yeah. doesn't do what he does in Black Mass if he doesn't own that you gear, man. You don't get to legitimately pull off Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah. No. Right. As an actor, right. like I understand why the Disney execs were going, this, what, watching the dailies, <laughs> you hear the stories, and like they didn't yeah. like it, and be no. like, it, if anybody comes in with this, like you'd be like, what? this is the choice? Yeah. And then after, like, I guess after you see enough, you're like, wow, that was a choice. Yeah. That was a fucking choice. But I mean, Ed Wood? Yes, what's Ed Wood, Gilbert great. Grape? Mm-hmm. Like he's got so many where he goes back and he just does a character, like a one-off. Yeah. Like almost he just created an impression, mm-hmm. does the impression throughout, it's amazing, and then just never just retires it like Louis does on specials. Yeah, yeah. Just Basically. Like, it's gone. Yeah. Never doing that again. Uh, and, and this is one of those because it goes, it, it, I mean, essentially, it's almost like another version of Goodfellas because you can see him young when he's starting out, getting into the situation and goes through all this shit. The heights of yeah. his money and power and fame. He's like, he's betting Penelope Cruz. It's that kind of thing. And then everything comes crashing down and he's a fucking dad, you know, trying to walk his daughter to fucking school with his members only jacket on it. It's just like, it's pathetic and it's sad. But that's but what, really that, was because, the gra- that was the journey though. But, but, but what is life ultimately kind of thing? What do you know. want from your life? And, you know, he made a decision and chose that. Cause yeah, he, look, he could have continued on in that lifestyle, and there's one of two outcomes. Yeah, death. Either he goes to jail eventually for the rest yeah. of his life, or someone kills him. Yep. That's it. Yeah. I'd rather live longer than that. I guess. It's not, is it really worth it to you? You've already gotten slapped on the wrist twice. Yeah. That third one, man, you're gone. Forever. It's adios. Yeah, you're in jail forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hardcore jail, not some, mm-hmm. you know, white collar. We get to play lawn tennis type of thing. Right, not Paul Sorvino making sausages in prison. Yeah, yeah, it's none of that. <laughs> right. This is going to be legitimate. You get to get out of your cell for a couple hours a day. Yeah. Showering is part of that couple hours. Food sucks. <laughs> That's right. It's like, no, dude, the rest of my life, Yeah. I would almost choose death. Yeah, it seems like a better option. Yeah. Yeah. Just end it. I don't want to do that. But it's just it's but it's also it's for me when I watch that, it's always because like, oh, you were so it was the height. And yeah. look where you ended up, you know. And it's the same thing with Henry like you know Henry Hill in, in Goodfellas, where he has the height of everything, and when everything falls apart, he's like getting spaghetti sauce. It tastes like this like a regular tom- tomato soup. Yeah, exactly. Like a regular yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, you know, it's I taste the greatness on, yeah. on egg noodles or something. Exactly, ketchup on egg noodles, <laughs> and they call this gravy <laughs> type of thing. But the but, Cliff Curtis is great as Pablo Escobar. Cliff Curtis is such a great actor, yeah. and him playing that character. By the way, Cliff Curtis not a fucking Latino at all. He's from fucking New Zealand. Dude. This movie legitimately has uh, Paul Rubens. Yes. And he's excellent. He's fantastic he's in excellent. this movie. Yeah. Uh, and Ethan Supley, who plays his uh, best friend, the yeah, larger plays, dude. Yeah, uh, plays Tuna? Yeah, Tuna, I think his name is. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah but, uh, you know. It's a fun movie, too, Matt. Um, it is. Right? Like, from beginning, it's fun. His journey is fun well, until it all falls the, apart, but it's the fun. The early part of it, when it's really fun and you're yes. young, and you stumble into just basically a, a gap in the system. Yeah. And you filled in that gap <laughs> uh, and just does it like so kind of easily. Yeah. I, I want to know if, because eventually once they've, they've moved a bunch of a pot over into Massachusetts area, right? Yeah. And it's like, where can we get, they need to cut out the middleman is the scene. Yeah. So they go to Mexico next and they just start asking around. 
Like, so does that one farmer then end up like turning into his main oh. supplier? Does he reach out to other farmers thereafter? I want to know how real that was or how uh-huh. he actually got that supply. Good question, man. Because the prison scene, that makes sense. Yeah. Although it's kind of stupid for the federal prison system to put these two people. This guy smuggles. <laughs> this guy's part of a drug cartel. This right. guy smuggles. <laughs> this guy. I guess there was no computer to sort those people out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just, you know, it's some guy <laughs> worried about his retirement benefits. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that first one, I was just like, okay, is that, I want to know if that, how true that is, or do they yeah. have to embellish that part? Because it was even more like happenstance ridiculous. Well, I think it's like, based on the book. I think he wrote a book about, I think the, it's, okay. yeah, I think it is. If I, if I'm not wrong, I think it's based on a book he wrote, he co-wrote or whatever, you know? Um, all right. What's your number? That was, that your was number, my number three. So what's am I up to my number three was no country for old men. So oh, what's okay. your number two. So my number two is a punt from yours earlier. Traffic. Ooh. All right. I like it because it's a perspective from as many sides as you can tell Mm -hmm. and all different from one another. You know, it's basically three main storylines. You got on the feet cops in a border town. Um, Is it Tijuana? I think so, yeah. Benicio Benicio is those cops. Benicio is his partner. Yeah. Yeah, and eventually he needs to work for the U.S. government to help because he can't trust his own government, Mm -hmm. which you heard about in Cartel Land. Go watch that documentary. There you go. And... uh, so that's one perspective of it. So there's the on the, the boots on the ground in the actual war zone. Yeah. Then we have the politicians fighting it out in Washington in the real world collateral damage of the guy's daughter gets yeah. on drugs. Yeah, Michael Douglas. And yeah. I believe that storyline entirely. And then you have the other side, which is the Pablo Escobar, for mm-hmm. lack of a better reference, him getting taken down, having to go through court, and his wife trying to hold together, just trying to like clutch on to what they have yeah. as best she can. Yeah. And how ruthless she, I'm sure, was was that behind closed doors, but now has to be the face of this. Right. And be the ruthless one. And be like, that's a witness. We need to kill that witness. Right. We need to do this, that, and the other. Just to see how a cartel affects, that's 20 lives, mm-hmm. 30 lives. Mm-hmm. And that's just a small sample size of the overall problem. Yeah. Especially on Benicio's end. Yeah. Yeah. That and the girl doing the drugs. Right. Um, but, Erica Christensen, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, and I also like that between the three, the uh, color palette and the cinematography is all yeah, different. So yeah, it gives right. you tonally, when you switch to one, it doesn't feel as jarring. Right. Because that helps like kind of reintroduce this is the vibe of this storyline. Absolutely. Type of deal. Uh, yeah, it's very yellow on Benicio yeah. Del Toro's thing. It's, it's very bluish. bluish. Yeah. And then I'm assuming Zeta Jones is probably like a red or a yellow. Something yeah. Like a fiery mm-hmm. kind of aggressive. Yeah. I don't remember. The, hers, hers seems to be the one that sparks... But not as bright yeah. as Del Toro's. Yeah, that's the reason I don't put it as high. To be honest with you, I don't like Zeta Jones in the movie, and I know a lot of people liked her in the movie, but I didn't believe her. Yeah, you her. could recast her. I just didn't believe her as ruthless in any way, shape, or form. I just didn't. I just didn't buy it. And it was. It was. I think it was just a product of the time in my mind. Like at the time, I just didn't see her as playing those kind of characters. I mean, she'd come off of Zorro. She'd come off of these kind of you know kind of other films where I didn't think she was capable of doing. So when I saw it, I was entrapment. Like, uh, yeah, entrapment. I was like, uh, I don't really believe you. But Del Toro's journey is incredible. That's what I was about man. to say. I didn't want yeah. to cut you off. No, no. I wish there was an entire movie of that. that it would have been way higher on my list if it was. Yeah. That's for damn sure, man. That would yeah. be still solidly number two would, behind what's yep. going to be both of our number one. Uh, prob- yeah. Yes, that's what right. That's probably? right. It's, it's, what do you mean probably? Unless I left it off the list again. Yeah, that's you. Know, shit. <laughs> We might have to stop the show and let you reorder the list and start this fucking thing over. No, again. God no. Um, but yeah, that's that's the reason why. But like, yeah, Del Toro's, and I, I don't mind the Douglas character story. And this is based for people who don't know the film is based on a eight episode miniseries in Britain. Yeah, and it's Traffic with a K, which talks and they talk they explore even further the uh, drug traffic trade. And its connections all over the world and how it's all connected and how they're able to move this stuff around and do whatever. And, you know, the politics stuff's involved. Everything is very similar to what you see in the movie now, but from that the was British the other film. thing that killed me about Miami Vice. Yeah. So the <laughs> drug dealer dude is what gets E from Germany and this from here. Right. And just, I guess that's hypothetically possible. Sure. I believe that actor could pull it off just because he was so fucking menacing. He really was. He was only paying attention to the business section and whatnot when we went to his house. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's like when they rattled it off, and I was like, this one dude is a global network of yeah. drugs, and nobody's caught him? Like, Interpol doesn't know where he lives? When you're good at it, 
You're good at it. It's, I mean, it's a hell of a villain. Yeah. It's a hell of a villain. <laughs> Your traffic's a little realer. It's just like... Yeah, it is. It really is. They don't ever really... I mean, there's the one guy that's a, uh, the leader of a cartel, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know... Is his cartel the one that ties all of them? I think so, yeah. So is Douglas going after him like it's his... I can't remember his role in the government. Is he Justice Department? Yes. Or... Yeah, okay. he's going after... Yeah. All right, so if, if he's Justice Department, then it makes sense that his daughter would be then on drugs and right. he's going after drug dealers, so it would tie all of them together. Isn't Topher her boyfriend, too, in the fucking film? Topher Grace? I think he's her oh, boyfriend. Shit, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. For some reason, I thought you were, you were implying Catherine Zeta-Jones, and I was no, like, no, I don't no, remember no, no, her no. having a boyfriend. No, because they took her husband away. <laughs> Not Topher Grace at that time. No. Yeah, no. I think he's the one that introduced <laughs> her to the drugs. Yes. Yeah, let's remember that. That was Tover trying to break out of that seventies show thing. Let me play a darker character. Well, was that and then like Ocean's Eleven a year uh, or two later? Oh yeah, he's in the poker scene in the beginning. That's right. Shit. Yeah. Um, who directed Traffic? Was it Ridley? Was Soderbergh? Soderbergh. Soderbergh. That's right. But Gagan wrote the script. Stephen Gagan. I can't wrote remember. The it was script. just the year that Soderbergh was that. double nominated for Best Director mm-hmm. for this and for Brockovich. Oh, that's right. And Aaron he won Brockovich. for this. Mm-hmm. Well, it makes sense. Brockovich is a good film. Yeah, but this is. They're more, both excellent films. They do two in one year. Yeah, wildly impressive. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and especially two that are tonally completely different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just it's a it's a, a, a portrayal of cartel and cartel action and how its tentacles reach out and affect numerous different people and new, like all kinds of different walks of life. And you could extend it then with your imagination out beyond this and out yeah. beyond this. Like yeah. this pebble keeps skipping across the pond. Yeah, the ripple. And the ripple effect <laughs> is just going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't end. The stone just gets smaller as it goes. <laughs> Did you like the ending though? Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't think that, that ending, like I don't think that movie's going to have some big, huge ending. Yeah. It never could. Yeah. Because it's just a snapshot of basically like a, a window of time in all these people's lives. Yeah. And everything in the middle is so big already. Yeah, you wouldn't, you couldn't have a big ending. Yeah, life's you, not like that. Right, exactly. More often than not. Yeah, that's right. That's why I push back when people get mad about the Sopranos finale. I go, I get it. I get why you're mad that it went black frame and you freaked out thinking your cable went out. But for me, that's what that show was. You got someone pulled a curtain open. You got to watch them for a little while, and then someone shut the curtain. That's it. You know, people wanted this. Like, great big ending and all this kind of stuff and everything to be explained. But I'm like, no, it was just a window into these people's lives for this amount of time that you got for them. And you should be happy you got to see them during this time. And then the window is closed. So, well, that's my opinion. I'm glad you have your opinion. <laughs> you don't agree. Uh, look, I don't oh. fault them. You got to make a choice. Right. And sometimes your choice isn't the one that everybody else wants. And so be it. Yeah. It's your art. Right. Uh, I was just hoping for something. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what. Some resolution. Anything, yeah. Other than just fake, I am one of those people. I was living in San Diego and yeah. I played, and I stared at it, and I looked at my roommates, and then I stood up and started walking towards the box to like hit it, like that was going to do something. Like slowly walking over, it yeah. mesmerizes. Like, oh my god, did our cable just go? I'm, I was one of those people. Yeah, me too. Legitimately, and I was like, what? And then it just credits. You're yeah. Like, okay. And then you're and then you're checking online. You're like, wait, does it? Did it end? And then you start to see the people putting their posts up saying, oh, yeah, this was this was planned. This was the way it was supposed to be, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, what the fuck? So yeah, so well, they'll point back out. to the time that he was on the boat with uh, his brother-in-law. Oh, and right. Some, hey, what, do you, what do you think that's like? And he's like, hey, I don't know. I'm not doing any good impression here, but I'm just going to do a you know, wise guy. It just it kind of goes to black. Yeah. yeah. Bobby Bacala. Yeah. That's right. Oh, God, I love that show, dude. I still go back and watch episodes of that fucking stupid show. Whenever there I are a couple show. that are absolutely perfection. Yeah, the stuff with, with Pussy, Big yeah, Pussy. Big when Puss the, is on the fish. The, on the boat. Oh, man. On the boat, but as the fish. Oh, yeah, as the fish. As oh. the fish is the one that, that it was like, wow, that was a hell of a story. Yeah. That was like, <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah. That was beautiful because that was like watching a dream on some level. Yeah. Mine seem more cartoonish. Like, they don't seem like I'm that realized yeah. in the scene. Yeah. Then neither does the scene. But at the same time, like, you got to do something. Yeah. Uh, There's some great scenes in that fucking show, man. That yeah. scene when Carmela finds everything out and like explodes on him in the bedroom, and man, that's a gr- she won the Emmy for that fucking scene. It was incredible when she, you know, she's confronting him with all the cheating. She's he's basically been doing. the only family member that I liked. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Meadow was Jamie Lynn Sigler was so annoying to the whole fucking show. So was the her AJ her the brother. brother. AJ was, yeah. I didn't mind Junior. I like Junior actually. Oh, the old guy. Yeah, Junior's great. Dominic Kynes. But uh, his mom. 
drove me nuts. Oh, yeah. And his sister, Janice, oh, yeah. drove me nuts. She's a Torturo. She's like John and uh, Nicholas's sister. Yeah, I'm not, it's not her, the no, actress. No, right, the character. It's right. the character. Absolutely agree with you. Because she was just mimicking her mom, her mom, who right. just nagged and complained and nothing was ever good enough. Right. Just like, oh, man, I. it's almost like my my... my Family isn't like that, mm. and I can only imagine growing up with that is the constant, yeah, just drumbeat in your ears of like you're, you know, nothing. Right, but Tony's also a massive dick sometimes to them. Like that's when Janice is starting to turn; she's really embracing these changes in her life, and she's about he got he just yeah, but pokes he's at heard her it before. Pokes at her and pokes at her. He's yeah, but he doesn't before. have to. But he pokes her to that dinner table, and mm. he's a fucking asshole to her. I didn't so. blame him. But the I thing guess. is, yeah, but the thing is, the whole family's fucked up from top to bottom, so mm. it doesn't really matter. Um. Well, that was our mini Sopranos review. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Spoiler. Let me do the time code for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't take away from the, the show at all. At all. If that spoiled the show for you, then you've been missing the best parts of the show. Exactly. Uh, so that was your number two? That was my two. So what do you get to? Scarface. A kick from earlier. Man, come on now. Al Pacino, Tony Montana. I just, it's classic. I kind of value more realism. What What realism? What are you talking about? You mean the utter lack of realism? What are you talking about? He's a hard scrabble guy. He's the American dream. He comes to this country. He works hard. He understands the business. He moves up quick. And then he becomes a titan of industry. And unfortunately, he makes one fatal mistake in a moment of compassion that ends up costing him his life and his empire. The problem is... <laughs> I wish this was on camera to oh, yeah. see your reaction. The the problem is the <laughs> way Pacino portrays him. Yeah, I don't believe that character can read above a third grade level. Boys, you're not supposed to. So I don't believe that you could build an empire. It's just street smarts, man. That um, eventually those street smarts will only take you so far. Well, it did eventually. He was killed. He yeah, but he got to live on the top for a few years. Yeah, that just seems ridiculous. That that. Kind of, I'm sorry, just the character never struck me as someone intelligent enough to orchestrate all these strings. Yeah, but he's got the street smarts. He got the street smarts. Yeah. yeah. Once again, this is. He knows. But you know, but you know, but he's never played. He, he but Pacino plays Loja. him dumb. You know, but Pacino Robert plays, Loja. I know, but Pacino plays him dumb. He does play him dumb. He's just street, street smart. Like that whole. He is. He can read people 100%. Yeah. And he well, knows like the situation is toxic or not. And Right. Uh, yeah, but. Eventually, you're in boardrooms when you're that big, and you're in, well, ha- sure. conducting business meetings and stuff. And yeah. it's just like, uh, no way, in no way do I believe he puts on a suit and walks in. So, oh, this my uh, this quarter of the dividends, and you're like, that dude's never heard the word dividends in his life, <laughs> because you would have to have uh, so many moving parts with the, everything <laughs> that Lucas puts together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, I believe that because you could see it. Like, I, I need a network of people, a family. He has yeah. a brother, a sister who doesn't work for him, no. and I don't know who another crony is. Uh, Nick, Fat Nick, or whatever his name sure. is. Yeah, sure. They're all kind of faceless on some level. Yeah. Well, no. When he kills Loja, remember he kills everyone else, but the the his bodyguard, that heavy set bodyguard. Is, oh yeah. Do you want a job? Yeah. He's like, oh, thank you, Tony. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and then Michelle Pfeiffer says it. Fat. Nick, that's my best friend. That Nick. What was it? So, but the 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 film is just it's still a classic, man. People still talk about it. it People is. still discover it. It's men, pulpy. It's very much a man movie, very much like a, man, a rite of passage for men to watch that movie and love it and enjoy it. Like I remember uh, a few years ago it became like the the thing for gangsters to have this idea of like these black velvet paintings of Tony Montana and these yeah, tattoo, I remember seeing the tattoos, right? Or the or these just of like, things, the graffiti of it. Yeah. I'm assuming hip hop is like every other right. form of culture. It influences culture and culture influences it. So I don't right. know where the pushback came from, right. but it popped up in, in iconography and whatnot. Yes. Pervasively throughout all of hip hop for a, quite a few years. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. much so that eventually it bled over into like you go to basketball players on MTV cribs and like, boom, I got the painting on the wall yeah. of that. You like, <laughs> you paid a lot of money, like five grand for that or something ridiculous. Yeah. That's how much it's sw- like it's yeah. swelled up to be mm-hmm. part of the identity on some level. Well, of- be also because a lot of these people who become basketball players famous are come from hard scrabble beginnings. They don't have sure. a lot of education. They, they, all they can do is really play ball well and they get in a situation where they, or, have to all this it's money. also a movie that I loved a lot more as a teenager. Right. 
And I think it appeals to that. And if I had the money they had at 22, I would probably be dumb enough to do that as well. Oh, of course. Yeah, just like, you know what? I saw it, and I love that movie because yeah. I'm 22, and I play basketball, so I don't have enough time to watch all the classics. Right. Just, I don't. <laughs> My opinion is the same as every other 22-year-old. I've yeah. only seen so much. There's a yeah. few anomalies out there, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. That have seen more than I have. That just fell in love with it early, and you got a lot of free time as a kid. Yeah. So you, you can watch as many movies as you like. But, it, it, you know, I can't fault it for it. But at the same time, I, it, you saw it everywhere. Right. And the film is a, the film's a hardcore film. Brian De Palma directed this thing. It's a hardcore film. There's a lot of very uh, violent deaths in the movie. And the chainsaw incident oh, like, is that insane. That scene is awesome. In the right? bathroom, oh, that whole yeah. scene is flat out the best part, my favorite part of the movie. Dude, it's so well shot. <laughs> F. Murray Abraham. Oh, my God. Omar. I love I love F. Murray. Great. But that is such a, it was such an interesting choice yeah. for just this villainous kind of guy and then the unceremonious way in which he uh, leaves this world. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, that guy, if Murray is a New York Jewish guy, like here he is playing a fucking a, drug an and Italian he's and believable, oh, totally 100%. believable. He's fantastic. Yeah, you buy him yeah, without but, a doubt. He's yeah, like, but Chino has no fucking Latino blood in him and he talked about it. Because I went to see Scarface at a Casa Long here in L.A., Years ago at the Greek Amphitheater, back when the I Greek didn't know that Amphitheater, was a thing. yeah, it, they they showed it for one night. It's some fun, it was part of a film festival. Stephen Bauer introduced the movie. He was oh, drunk well. as hell. Good for him. Yeah, he showed up on the stage, introduced the movie. Lo- love Stephen Bauer, by the way, great guy. But this was like ten years ago, and uh, they had instead of a sing along, they had a cuss along. So people in the audience, and there was an outdoor amphitheater, would cuss along with the movie, and it was fucking brilliant i mean you saw mothers fothers a kid their kids families just all there cussing along with the movie kids yeah sure like 12 15 year old 16 year old kids cussing no along fucking with the cockroach. <laughs> yeah. you got it oh me. man that was the scene everyone was like oh how can you I not bury the fucking diaz brothers those fucking cockroaches oh man it was great dude so but it's the, yeah. the best that's one of the best lines in the the entire damn movie fuck they fucking the ass brothers. Yeah. Well, because at this point, now say hello to my little friend. Yeah. It's just it's say hello to my little friend. Right, right, right. It's it's not even that part of that movie anymore. Yeah. It's now just like this tired kind of saying. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it also has a special attachment because uh, um, the drug dealer uh, Sosa, they meet in Cochabamba, which is where my dad was born. So when they Cochabamba? have Cochabamba, 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 yeah. So when they show that, they show the graphic. It says Cochabamba, Bolivia. That's where my dad was born. So it was always a favorite thing in our house. Like my dad and I would watch that movie like religiously, man, growing up. And at Christmas, on Christmas, we would watch it. It was just our <laughs> thing. It really was. We watched Godfather One, Godfather Two, and Scarface. That was our day at Christmas. Whenever I'd come home, <laughs> it was fucking great. My dad was. My dad loved the gangster films, man. So I love it, that was the one, man. John, it's time to celebrate the birth of Christ. <laughs> Let's watch Vamos. mob crime movies That's for the right. next nine hours. Let's get it on, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so great. Was and, it, what, you open presents to just immediately, that's the rest of your day? Yes, yeah, the rest of the it, day. Okay, I didn't yep. know if it was on in the background. Mom made breakfast. Presents. Mom made breakfast. We ate breakfast and then sat down and watched and in what a nice, comfortable doing? chair. I can't believe she was just like, we're watching this. This is what we do at Christmas. My mom would go into her bedroom and watch her shows, which, you know, it was just that was their marriage. That was their, the way they chilled it, you know? And so my mom understood. She knew I loved those movies. and Or we'd go downstairs and watch them. My mom would watch whatever she wanted to watch in the living room upstairs. So you know, it was the way it was. It was worked in our house. You know, well, what can I tell you? I can yeah. tell you. Look, every marriage functions the way it functions. It functions. Yeah. yeah. My mom understood. You know, she dug it. Well, my After- dad spent a lot of time with my mom. So whenever I came home, it was like you want to spend time with me sometimes solo. And so that's what we would do. Watch those movies. You know. Yeah. No, I think about that now. I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm guilty of I spend too much time with one over the other when I go to see them. Oh, really? You no, feel that way? Not. It's not always the same. Uh-huh. So then I feel guilty afterwards. Like Gosh, I think I hung out with. <laughs> dad more this time than i did mom just because i don't get to see him that much so i want to try and spend of course as much time with each as i possibly can but there's only so many minutes in a day there really is yeah and and you know you should just feel happy that you get the chance brother it's trust me it matters i i am unfortunately like you don't think about that because you don't want to think about that it creeps into your mind every once and again but it's just like uh look that'll happen when it happens and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna think about i've got that's on a list of things I don't want to think about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But you realize that later. Like, it's just... it's, it's It so, does. So the older you get... The balance is irrelevant. They're just happy to see you, man. That's, that's what really I know, matters. but at the same time, it's just like... I, what, what have you been up to? I know nothing's changed, but at the same time... <laughs> right, exactly. I, I didn't take full advantage of this when I was younger because I was young and stupid. Yeah. 
because we lived together for 18 years, and eventually you got sick of my shit, and I got sick of your shit. Well, just, they were young and stupid, too, so they've been through the rite of passage. You went, so it's the same thing. Yeah, it is. It's just a cycle. It is. You know, yeah. We, I'm just the we worst the about guts. it in my family of, like, calling and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're a singular entity, Matt. You, you can be an I. You, you're like, I know you and your wife, you're together, but, like, you... You also can be an island, and you, oh, no, yeah, I you do. choose to. It's just how you're built naturally, so yeah. I don't think you should judge yourself. I venture it. off when I want to do something, mm-hmm. and then I go back to – I try not to stay home because I got one buddy that – if he doesn't have to go to work, then he just chills at home. It's just like I can't All do fucking that. day? Yeah. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. I could do it for one day. I couldn't do it for like – I have to get out of the house every once in a while. Man. Yeah, I got to do – I have to do something. Yeah. No. Even if it's nothing, I have to like – uh, there were you know days, especially when I was single, where just like – I have to go out today. I have nothing planned. I don't feel like going to do anything, so I'll go to the mall. Right. Or I'll go see a movie and then just like tool around somewhere for like an hour. Yep. And then I've done something for three hours. Yeah. So I don't just feel terrible because I had nothing to do today. Unemployment was the worst. Yeah. When I was unemployed for a couple of years, man, it was like that. I was like, the fu- after I send in all my resumes, after I make the calls, do whatever, the fuck am I going to do? And it was before I could understand about making podcasts or doing kind of things. I would just roam around. And I, and th- th- I would go through days where I wouldn't leave, like three days where I wouldn't leave the house. I would just like watch TV all day, wake up. Watch TV all day, eat my food, do my business, yeah. take a shower. It's a hassle to take Keep a watching TV. Yeah, it was like kind of a hassle. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. a hassle if you need food. Yeah. You're like, to go, oh, man, God, I got to go gotta get put, it. I got to put on shoes. Uh, how, yeah, I got to put shoes on. Can I go out? Like, uh, these, Is my outfit all right? Or yeah. Do I fucking change? I don't know. Uh, I got to run one errand today. I got to go to the post <laughs> office. Uh, yeah. I don't I've know how many times I'm with pajama pants going to the fucking Target. It's the worst, man. Um, all right. Anyway, let's jump off of that. Uh, so our number one film, I imagine, is the same. It is Sicario. Uh, we, as we've the said, should have been Best Picture of 2015. 2015. We've both said that is the number as one of the favorite films of the top ten show. Um, yep. And I watched it again because I bought it for like four bucks on Blu-ray over Thanksgiving for Black Friday. I couldn't believe it at Best Buy. It was four bucks. I was like, I gotta own this motherfucker. And I finally bought it, and uh, I watched it again. Just as powerful. Uh, yeah, I watched it a couple the, months ago. Yeah, right. It still carries the weight that it carries, and it's still unsettling. And Josh Brolin's still incredible. Benicio's incredible. The stuff with John Bernthal going in with Emily Blunt, and Emily's great, of course. She's always great, but like, yeah. the whole story is as dark as it comes, and as stark as it comes. I know. I want it to last another two hours. Yes, because I want to explore even more of this. Really dark and sadly realistic portrayal. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we talked about it in the past, but we both have been fascinated and read uh, accounts and whatnot of what those border towns are like. Oh, the yeah. amount of violence and deaths, bodies mm-hmm. that just end up. Sometimes there are twenty to thirty heads just strewn in yeah. the, the city the city circle as a message. Yeah. There's one town on the border with Mexico that they have killed every mayor. Within a certain amount of time, so that nobody would run. So this like eighteen year old girl ran and yeah. won, and then eventually she got killed. Yep. And it's just it's the wild, wild west in the worst aspects. Mm-hmm. There's so much death, destruction, and when they drive across and you see those people hanging, yep. that is, I've read accounts of that yeah. where that is a warning to the neighborhood. This is what happens. Yep. This is what happens, and guess what? The police have driven by this too. Yes. And they didn't take it down. That is a warning to them as well. Mm-hmm. You got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, man. That these private thugs, these private individuals who are thugs, have this much power. Yep. And that is real. And it's literally across some imaginary line yeah. that we've drawn in the border. sand, a fictitious yep. border between America and the state. Yeah, we're on the same. Yeah, we're on the same fucking landmass. We're on the same fucking landmass. Right there. But this, this, uh, this random uh, line we've drawn between us and Mexico, uh, you know, encourages us to create this idea of a difference, was, you know? But wall up, putting that kind of bullshit, you know? And so you're right, you're right. You know, it's insane how that, just crossing that line, you see the, all these terrible things in these areas. And, and yeah. it's our fault. Yeah, of course. It's our fault. The The utter pointlessness of a war on drugs yeah. when we're also fighting, the uh, we're funding the people we're fighting against. Exactly. <laughs> just like or, literally just throwing money at, at a problem. Yep. Just throwing money at it. Or uh, the inability to really find out who these rich motherfuckers who 
uh, benefit from this situation, who are bringing these drugs in the, in the country, making their money, that are these politicians' best friends. That they're making the money through their businesses. They, I mean, it, it ain't no poor ass motherfucker knows who, uh, is buying planes. That's rich people bringing the drugs over in in boats. That's fucking rich people. That is not no motherfucker on on the ground floor somewhere in some town in Mexico yeah. doing this. You know, they're like they're not walking it over and just tossing it over the fucking line. And like, sometimes they are. So, well, right, fine, they literally but, are. Yeah, they right. used to be like drop points where like they just throw it over the wall and yeah, because it's out in the middle of nowhere. Well, that's what I like about American Made. Like American Made, that Tom Cruise movie. Yeah, the CIA funded. Yeah, shit, that shit's all real. It like, almost made my crazy. list actually. Yeah, I was on it the was fence about it. I was like, I maybe. I want to give it more time and watch it yeah. again and be like, does it does it have the meat to actually merit being on the yeah. list? Yeah. Uh, but, but this thing, man, it like you said, the hanging bodies, uh, it pulls no punches. Hell no. I mean, that whole opening scene from the movie lays the groundwork for what you're about to watch when they I want to see the build up walls. to that. Yeah. Show me the story that led to if this is just one, yeah. where are the others and what else don't we know about kind of thing? Like, yeah. I, I want to look into the abyss, and I want the abyss to look back. I want to see how deep this is. All right, Nietzsche. All right. This is just scary as all hell. Yeah, it is. And this is the tame side, what, the tame version of what they're doing on our side, because they feel they have to hide this many bodies, whereas in Mexico, they put them out in display. Yep. Because they can. It's a different culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they have to operate in the shadows up here, whereas, I, you know, down there... They can walk around a little more freely. Yeah. That's the scary thing about it all, Matt, is like um, how close it is to our borders. And it's going to keep creeping. I mean, maybe what they're doing now with the last few years in these administrations to push back against it is going to make some effect. But I don't know, man. I doubt it. Look, yeah. there is so long as there's demand, yeah. there will always be drug dealers and we'll right. always be combating them. We still have the biggest stick. Yeah. So they can only push so hard. Mm-hmm. Because we can literally go nuclear on you. We would never do it. Nope. Because you're not a nation. But and we're on the same landmass again. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, there's a nuclear winter. All that kind of stuff. You can't do that on the same landmass as you. Depending on the size of the nuclear weapon used. Really? I don't. I. I mean, you. You can keep the fallout to a minimum. To, I, I. I don't. I don't know. Okay. You're but the I'm science saying, guy on the top. 10 yeah, show. but I'm saying you'd have to have like hella crosswinds because you know they used to detonate outside of Vegas. Oh yeah. So you're telling me as long as we didn't do it close to one of our towns, we just did it far enough away, a hundred miles away. Fair point. Unless the wind is really blowing up strong, I, I don't yeah. know. Like, don't know. But at the same time, it seems as though, like, as long as you did a small enough one, I guess you could probably get away with it. Yeah, like a baby, a but baby I don't nuclear know. weapon. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so it's not like, uh, like I said, you're the science guy on the show. I man. know. <laughs> one of my favorite aspects of that, like, you think the government knows all the answers, but one of the leading, I want to say, it was like. A, a missile and ballistics tech guys in the entire world yeah. is either the bassist or the guitarist for the Doobie Brothers. What? And I'm not making that up. What? It's like some sort of specific defense uh, aspect because he had to testify before Congress. Right. He has the full like handlebar mustache, ponytail pulled back, but he is one of the world's leading experts. This was 20 years ago. That's or incredible, man. I'll, I'll look it up. I could be, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm 99.999, like infinite nine. He's from the Doobie Brothers. He plays a stringed instrument, yes. and it's some sort of that type of missile technology, mm-hmm. something or other. Mm-hmm. And he has had to testify before Congress. It's ridiculous, though. <laughs> that somebody yeah. listening to us probably knows enough about you know, yeah. nuclear weaponry to tell me, tell us rather. Right. Actually, point of fact, you cannot do that. And be like, all right, I don't know. Nailed it. I don't know. It seems plausible to me. I think it's yep. the same. And the the knock I've heard on Sicario is. They don't like when Del Toro comes back around to demand her signature. And mm-hmm. I think that cements the entire motivations of, of so course. many characters. Of course. Because she is us and wants to believe that there's black and white in this right. issue. Right. And Brolin and Del Toro are the actual gray area of life. Yeah, they're the wolves. Yeah. Yeah. They understand. So you need to shatter her ideals as to what this situation is. Yeah. And what better than the one person that had his entire world destroyed and his ideals are, ideals are completely gone. Right. And she asks him, like, who do you work for? And, it's kind of like a who's paying me today. Yeah, yeah. Which I, which is why I look forward to the sequel. I want to see what he does because folks on I him hope they and don't Brolin. Fuck it up, man. man, me neither, man. The, the trailer looked great though. Yeah, I'm not going in so, with best picture aspirations. Right. I'm not going to hold it to that. I just want it to be good enough to where we could continue the storyline yes. and maybe get a third or a fourth or something or 
the actors change by the yeah. third one, but the story continues because this story never dies. Right. Uh, I hope. That's my hope for it. And I would say to you, Matt, and I would say to anybody, sorry, who's listening, if you're one of those people that had an issue with Benicio going back to making her sign the, the paper, you're the reason why the scene is in the movie. Because you still want to believe the good... That's not what a good person would do. Yeah. That's, this is not no motherfucking movie. This is real life. This yeah. is this is not no black and white you know, morality play. This is a real fucking world. And it is dark and ugly and gray. And you've got to compromise on so many levels well, it's, in order to do, make an impact or a dent on that. It's literally the president saying, once he's informed, this person is doing this, like this drug lord. Yeah. And he's like, take care of it. Yep. And take care of it means we don't care how it gets done. Eventually, when it comes down the chain, yeah. this has to be done. Right. This is unofficially official, and there are repercussions if we don't pull this off. Yeah. That's why I like when she can't go through the tunnel. She can't do it. Yeah. And my boy goes through it and fucking With kills ease. It and kills that dude and his family. And I'm like, damn. But also takes out the driver. Yes. Who had a family and was just yeah. a dude with a job. Yeah. But- Collateral damage of the world. It is. It's kind of. It's kind of like cartel land when those yeah. guys are like, "This is my job." He knew going into it that this is a hypothetical, right? Even if you are on the furthest outskirts of this job, yeah. this job still carries some part of that risk. Well, that's why I enjoyed about it, man. Like we said before many times, yeah, it pulls no punches, and nobody's a hero in this whole movie. Nobody. Yeah, I mean uh, Emily Blunt to a degree, but not necessarily a hero. Just that she doesn't go, she doesn't violate her ethics or principles or morals. Yeah, to she doesn't wallow in else. the muck. No, she doesn't. She refuses to do it, and respect to her. But she does sign that paper. And Have that's, to. That's her way exactly. Yeah. The other option is death. He yeah, was going to kill her. He was absolutely going to kill there, her. Yeah, one of two outcomes. Yeah, yeah. His mission is bigger than just this one person. Right, which is so great. That's what I love about the film. Anyway, all right. That's our top ten cartel movies, uh, our lists, our separate lists, rather. So now so you know. So it's my turn to bang. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I will put this together. We're definitely Sicario number one. Yeah. Uh, what did you have at number two again? I have Traffic, but you had that lower. I had it seven. You had Scarface where? At seven. Oh. <sighs> So it's two How do we solve two this situation? Listen, third grade reading level. Third grade <sighs> reading level. Look, I'll accept it only because Traffic was nominated for Best Picture and Soderbergh's nominated for Best Director. So And one for Best Director. Yes, so I will accept it, but I will still put Scarface at three. Yes? That's fine. Okay. If, if That's the only way that's fair. That's the only way, yeah, exactly. It's what, the only way that's fair. So the next one is what's your number what? My number three is what you don't have, which is blow. Oh, yeah. Um, I would have had it at six. Where do you have No Country for Old Men? Four. I have it at four. Can we put that there and then blow it Put it after? at three. Okay. Sure. So blow will be five. All right. Yeah, because we have Scar- Sicario, Traffic, Scarface. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, you're right. Yeah, No Country. So, okay, so I have Gangster Nick. What do you have next? I got Gangster at six, In to Watch at five. Okay, so we can put Gangster there, and then End of Watch next. Okay. All right, where are we at now? I have French Connection next. What do you have? Uh, clear and Present. Oh, yeah, we that's a common. We do present. have Clear and Present. So that would be number, what, eight? Sure, you got the list. I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my list, and... Uh, don't be a smart ass. You're doing the heavy I'm lifting I'm doing the best today. I can. You're doing great. I wasn't making a comment. You just asked me a question I had, do not know the answer to. <laughs> Been at work all day, goddamn. I am of no help. <laughs> That's a good point. You just you took it in as sarcasm. <laughs> God forbid. I'm just I saying. I never misread your sarcasm. I'm just saying that was not me. Now this, there's a tone to. Yes. But that there was not. I do. I, I don't even know. My apologies. If you actually right. went back and listened, if there's a difference, but all right. So uh, we have two left. I got two documentaries. What do you have? I have French Connection, City of God, Miami Vice. So I'm happy. Can we put French Connection? Then you can pick whatever documentary you want. All right. That then Cartel Land. Okay. Done. Look at that. Nice. All right. Uh, You're banging? I'm banging. Give me that sweet falsetto. The top 10 cartel movies. Yeah. And number 10. Cartel Land. At number nine. The French Connection. Coming in at number eight. Clear and Present Danger. At number seven. End of Watch. And number six is... American Gangster. Starting our top five is... Blow. And number four. No Country for Old Men. Coming in at the three spot is... Scarface. In the deuce. Traffic. And finally, our number one drug cartel movie is... Sicario. There it is. 
There's a list. Wow, it's a good list, man. A lot of great movies on that list too. If you and you know, fans always tell us like, oh, you give a good, you give us good things to explore. Blah, blah, blah. If you haven't explored some of these movies, get on it. I yeah, I would assume so because we you can fall down a rabbit hole of uh, what was that like um, ah, Schwarzenegger movie? Was it Last Stand? Oh yeah, like there's that one. There's the Rock one. It's like Snitch or something. Oh, Snitch is good. Okay, I, I, I didn't quite it. put it up because I think it was more focused on that kid being getting getting his kid out of prison. Okay, it wasn't the focus wasn't on the cartels. The focus was on him getting his kid out of prison. So that's why I couldn't quite put it on the list. But that's a damn good movie, and The Rock can really act in that movie, man. Okay, I never saw because it, it just didn't? seemed so middle of the road. I'm kind telling, of blah. it's good. It's good. It's not like his walking tall bullshit. Like the fucking that's what I assume vehicles. No, this one's a little more uh, edgier and heavier. Benjamin Bratt plays the main drug dealer and or the cartel leader. And then John Bernthal's in there as an ex-con who helps him. And Bernthal's great in the film. So I would recommend it if you haven't seen Snitch. Honestly, it's good acting. Okay. Um, but yes, <laughs> Last Stand is something else completely. <laughs> hey, yeah, but it's a cartel movie. There's a bunch of those who are just like, a yeah. yeah, that is a cartel movie, but I'm not really a big fan of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so strange because when we came up with this topic, I was like, this. I thought of like my top six yeah, right or up the seven. Back. It's like, mm-hmm. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, 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 we'll be able to do this easy. And yeah. then I was like, ah, oh, shit. That, that one doesn't count for me, or that right. one I'm not a fan of, yeah. or just kind of over and over and over again. But uh, ultimately, a good list. Ton we of got great movies. Yeah, absolutely. So please go out there and listen. Not listen, but watch, watch. <laughs> those movies. You can listen. Yeah, sure. I would try and do bo- both. Um, Usually helps when you're watching a movie. It yes. does. <laughs> it does. Uh, to all those people uh, we had asked you and you guys delivered, I just want to say thank you because we said uh, if we have a guest on, please let them know on Twitter. Yeah. And you guys have been doing that, uh, you know, to a T, and we can't thank you enough. So yeah. whenever we have a guest on, it is awesome because afterwards, like we've said in the past, we'll see them a month later or yeah. whatever the case is and be like, somebody just hit me up about it the other day, man. This is awesome. Like, oh. You guys have a really fun Yep group of fans so i just want to say thank you because it only helps us getting other guests which yep. we've got feelers out to so thank you yeah clark wolf commented on it last week when i met when i saw her here at the studio she was like i can't believe how many people added me because i was on the show they seemed to like really enjoy me on the show because like, you were great it was a great episode yeah. and gray drake said the same thing it's like your fans are amazing and i was like yeah they, they fucking love people when they come on i think it's a symbiotic relationship because yeah. you know we're here to respect opinions. We're here exactly. to shoot shit. Uh, but also, it's just like, it's a discussion of film. We're here to have fun. So if you have differing opinions, so be it. Yeah. We're here to, you know, try and respect all opinions. Some of those are our best shows. Yeah, like, without a doubt, because like, they bring out an energy. Exactly. Uh, it's something, you know, you know, it's a nice spark every once in a It's also nice to get back to the tete-a-tete. Yes, agreed. Uh, <laughs> no, I know, because we, we've, been, we've been running hard on guests all and Since we had one potentially lined up for this week. Have we gone with another topic? Yes, we did. We did. But uh, she she will be back. She will be on the show at some point down the road. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are people we're looking at. Uh, there are possibilities in the air now because people have come on the show and really enjoyed yeah. it. And because you so, guys were so fantastic. Exactly. exactly. We've had guests now independently reach out to some of their friends without yeah. even talking to us and saying, hey, I think you'd be, I think you'd enjoy yourself on this show. Yeah. Because they had such a good time with us here and then you guys were so amazing on your end. Yeah. So trust me, there's... Two or three names that have been floated our way that if we can get them, you're going to be just as excited as we are. Yes. I wish I could say more, and I feel like a prick just even saying that. Like, <laughs> no, it's, it's good. It's good to tease. It's you a good know. tease, but it's just like it's so close. Yeah. It's, all, it's thanks to those two things. Yep, absolutely. We're good hosts. We make it easy for them to have as much fun as they like to, and you guys are amazing fans. So yeah, thank absolutely. you very much. And if you want to join the discussion, I'm on Twitter at Matt Nost, M-A-T-T-K-N-O-S-T, or go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash The Top Ten Show. That's right. And you guys can always find me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And remember, if you want to donate to our Patreon, you want to be part of the Thunderdome, you want to help us, you don't want to pick a topic, you want to be one of those people who picks the movies in the Thunderdome, you know where to go, www.patreon.com backslash The Top Ten. Donate. We're almost at our goal. I, of the 2000 I think $2,000 a month we're almost yeah, there yeah we're close we're close we're real close we'll eventually want to get to the 5000 so that we're like able to get the studio able to get the whole thing and we're able to find time for it and put it in this calendar and bring you more content you know because we've been doing the Thunderdomes we want to come ba- we want to eventually go back to doing the reviews of movies that have just come out like there's all kinds of things that we've got in here and we've got ideas for other things that we can do for you all you know other yeah. other gifts other other giveaways or other other uh, yeah, thing- t-shirts ways. are t-shirts, coming yeah t-shirts all those things they're all in motion yeah that's in yeah. the works mm-hmm. uh that's almost done basically it'll 
when one thing happens, then that'll happen that same day, and then T-shirts will be up by the time the next show airs. Exactly. Not specifically the next show after this one. I'm saying right. once we can line our schedules up to go do a couple things, yeah. then boom, T-shirts are coming. and it's, So that's a foregone conclusion. Just know that I'm, I would say in the next month or so, yeah. we should have T-shirts done. And when the T-shirts come out, tell people about the show. Like, Make sure you let them know about the show. You know you have a great time listening to us. No one has ever said to us or ever tweeted us, hey, I suggested your show, but my friend listened to it and hated it. No, everyone you've ever turned to, uh, everyone from what I've ever seen that's been turned on to the show loved it. So give it shots. T- keep telling people about it. Tweet about it on your social media. Do whatever you need to do to bring more people to the show because we're just going to keep growing. I do have one. So the the cop that contacted oh, yeah. us that yeah. had started the group, the uh, Penn Network. Yep. Um, I can't remember his name. But he reached out and made some bracket or whatnot, and it, it was cool. I went and actually went through it, and I voted. Yeah. And there's some matchups that I think are poorly. I, I saw how he broke down and did it, so it makes sense, and it's the easiest way to do it, and I understand. I'm right. But there's a couple that's just like, bullshit. Bullshit <laughs> that that is that low. <laughs> but anyway, I jokingly said, have you started playing us in lockup yet? You know oh, what I mean? Over yeah. the PA? And he's like, no, but I may or may not have had like been playing it after I, you know, had somebody under arrest in the car. Oh shit! And I'm like, oh hey. <laughs> hey, in my head, I was like, baby steps, <laughs> baby steps. All right, well, if you're in the back of a police car listening to us, uh, look, man, find your way out of it. Yeah, you know, exactly. You Hire know. a good lawyer. So, yeah, get a good lawyer. Treat the cop nice. Yeah, absolutely, be because maybe the cops. he'll go a little bit more leniently yeah. on the the police report. Who good, knows? Good behavior goes a long way. And if it you need, if you need to get cleaned up. Do, you know, start, there's programs out there's there. Programs out there. You can write yeah. this ship. Absolutely, absolutely. You can do it. Yes, you I've can. Been, do I've it. been arrested a few times in my life. There you go for like drunken, stupid stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, Who hasn't? Yeah, for God's sake. Yeah, you know, we're it, men. That's fine. what we do. It, that's, that's, that's you get on. You can write the ship. Right. You can do it. It <laughs> works if you work it. <laughs> that's right. If you works, if you work it. It that's works right. if you work it. So that's all you got to do. Do the work. Um, I do want to give a special shout out, Matt, to Cinema Blend for putting us on their oh, top, yeah. top five podcasts for every film fan. Uh, that needs, so if you haven't seen that or didn't know about this, go to cinema, cinemablend.com. They put us on their top five podcasts. We're right behind the Kevin Smith podcast. That's a great place for us to be at, Oh, man. yeah, that and How Did This Get Made? How Did This Get Made? The NPR How Did This Get Made? We're on the same list yeah. with those podcasts. and. From a very reputable uh, film Couldn't site, it. Cinema Blend. Yeah, they didn't even tag us in it. <laughs> no, they didn't tag us in it. But but we found out about yeah, it. Yeah, which thank is nice. God the fans. Yeah, and then uh, went over there. I was like, wow. I said, tweet back. Hey man, this was you know very nice of you. Thank yeah, you. Kind yeah, kind of thing. Um, it's very sweet. So you yeah. know, we're growing. Like I don't I know said, where we're growing. But it's once again thanks to you listening. We're mm-hmm. we're happy to continue on the show. We we do have ideas. Yeah. going forward, we're working on things on the back uh, on the back end. Yeah. Uh, and if you're listening to us for the first time because of Cinema, Cinema Blend, welcome aboard. Welcome. Go back and listen to our yes. other episodes. We listen there on the feed. You can see the different uh, uh, titles, the different subjects we're gonna, we tackle, and also the different guests, the great, amazing guests that we've had on the show over the last six months. You can go back and like listen to those episodes, and trust me, you will enjoy them. You will have a, It's a great way to spend your day listening to us, if you're tooling around, doing errands, or cleaning the house, whatever. It's a, some people take us to work out, so it's all there for you. So That's what I'll say. That's it. Anything else? Okay. All right. That is it. Yeah. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. And uh, that's it for the Top 10 show this week. All right. We will talk to you all next time.